my god. That is hot. I don't want the internet to bully me anymore. I just want a wide receiver. And he's gonna run it deep out of the end zone here. And he breaks free! Da -da 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 they beat the Dallas Cowboys! You twerk in the last house. Dirty one. Jimmy just stepped out, AP. He stepped out the back of the end zone. Oh my god. He's still messed it up. Oh, we still here. We have hit 400k! Half a freaking fracking million people! Touchdown, Jordan Love and Christian Watson! It's freaking fracking time. Nation, welcome to an episode of Podcast, Podcast where you don't. I do Pakistan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. It's freaking fracking Friday night, Rossi. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. The final Friday in March, and we are here. Kung Fu with a tenor. It's Friday night, and the feeling's right. Pour some water on those chaos gremlins, and let's get crazy. Feed them after midnight. Mm, 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 mm. Do it. Do it. Go, go. Well, dinner is Friday. You know what that means. Bittersweet since an hour ago. I lost my hero. My grandpa at 94. Hell of a ride, but Tom, watch some of your vids, and they always make me laugh, so thanks. Koku, I am so sorry to hear about the passing of your grandfather. 94? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm sure that was one hell of a life. My condolences for you and your family. I hope things get better soon. And yeah, as, may we all go, uh, go that long. Right? Right? May we all. I hope we're all having a good night. Winter's watching the Lambo and uh, Nora video. So yeah, I put out a video about 15 minutes ago. Just got to update the thumbnail on there. But yeah, uh, I, I was so happy to be able to talk to Nora. Uh, a story that is five years in the making. I have had this on my desk for about four years ever since they first sent it to me. And yeah, just, just an awesome story. And I, I kind of wanted just to make it not only just to share Nora's story, but also just to, I think for like the stuff that we do, like we do chaotic good. And a lot of the times, because again, we don't tell the charities that we're raising money for them, obviously. So for example, real quick, cheap plug, uh, you got, eh, give it about like 36 minutes or something to 45 minutes. And I'll wind up uh, doing the live drawing for who's going to win the signed cleats uh, challenge athletes foundation the link is down below every ten dollars enters you in for a raffle and it's pretty damn awesome now i will say um just like having that story just we we donate to charity we don't look for the recognition we kind of leave and go all right deuces and like this just an act five years ago drastically changed somebody's life and it's just it's freaking awesome. So I appreciate you. Uh, those were, I don't know how many people are here from 2019, but we're doing some good. We're doing some freaking fracking good. Go, Turk. Why is 9 11 thing not in your 2023 Bills vid? Because I think I talked about it and did enough videos on it, honestly. John, uh, when you are waiting for uh, uh, Casey uh, Walla uh, and you get a notification on Facebook about someone like your post made five years ago and it was Nick Foles. Hey. EDN, man. He always likes it. Right, one. Which are BJ is the art of folding clothes while being worn. Yeah, if you're doing gi, yeah. Levi with a tear. Glad to see you, goat. Hope all is well. And go pack, go, baby. Go pack, go. Funky with a fire. Not the best gato uh, photo sent over the Twitter. But he's chilling on my lap right now. Excited to be part of the conversation. Cheers to you. Hey, let's go, Funky. Hope the gato is doing well. Come on now. 
Come on now. Mario got a fire. Jesus loves you, Tom. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. NFL edits. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Fitzgerald. All the mania hype. Is it just me, though? Is it just me that, uh, is there, like, anything happening on SmackDown tonight? It seems like there's not, really, it didn't look like it was advertised that there's a whole big shift uh, going on. Andrew, Beach Matter Clickbait Force was WWE wrestler. Who would they be? Uh, Perna would be, ooh, Perna would be tough. Perna, Brutus the Barber briefcase. Yeah, maybe, maybe Matt, maybe Brutus the Barber. Maybe that. Five would be, uh, Mm. Tree, I feel like would be like a George the Animal Steel kind of guy. I think uh, five is just be offensive and bald. I think of someone with bald, bald Scooter. Scooter would be like Sheldon Benjamin. He, he's athletic. He get yeah, he gets it. Me. That's <laughs> a, a wrestling cop. I don't know. A wrestler cop. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Gamania Tour, 10 favorite NFL teams now. Packers, 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 Packers. Throw like the Bills and Bengals in there. They're fine too. I like the Texans too. Or should I say the Strouds? Strouds. John, thanks for the membership. Appreciate you. Darth, it's Friday Night Smackdown, baby. Hey, Dave's here from Mania. J oh, that's right. Jade's debuting tonight. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. That's big news. Goku to fire. Tonight's uh, Smackdown's Jade Cargill's debut. There we go. There we go. Richard Tersh, Broncos draft a QB in the first round. If they don't have to give up too much to go get him, sure. Sure. Matthew at 20, top. Go, Pat, go. Also, Bill, content, Dan Mitchell sent you a DM for potential collab. I, you know, I appreciate you, Matthew. Yeah, I have not, I, I'm very behind on my DMs and very, very behind on my emails. It's been a week. It's been a week. Look at tour, uh, Super Bowl or Olympic gold medal? Uh, Super Bowl. Super Bowl, 100%. Eduardo with a fiver. Tom, any chance clear doing an NFL react to the UFL video as opening weekend? I want to see that. Uh, probably not. I'm, like, swamped this weekend, so most likely not. I know Pern is going to be doing UFL stuff, though, so you can definitely check out his channel. I'm sure he'll have a bunch of stuff. But, yeah, I, I obviously am probably not going to be able to watch the UFL. I just don't got no time. Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect? Come on, Bret Hart, baby. Bret Hart. BC, I was trying to get out more reactions this week, and I just couldn't get it done, so... I'm trying. They're on the docket. They are on the docket. So I'm hoping no news and everything like that, and I can get back to them next week because I was I was very much planning on getting them out. I was. Dean, happy almost birthday, buddy. Happy almost birthday. Hey, like the cut. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, Jordan, how much money do you think you've raised for all the charities? I don't need an estimate. Duck father. Welcome, welcome. Besides, like, stuff pre-2021, so 2021 was 86K, 2022, we, like, just by itself, 2022, that year was 102,081, last year was 619,888, so all that together, it's like $720,000 uh, past uh, few years, so not too bad, not too bad. Nick, half a freaking fracking year, video game recommendation, ooh, Balotro, Parker, Poker roguelike? Ooh. All right. I, I dig it. I dig it. Appreciate it. As mad at fire. Found some Allagash White near me. That's a really good beer. I know. I try to tell the people. I try to let them know. I try to let them know. Tracy, it is. It's just going to be more difficult. I'm, uh, Nash, I'm not going to be able to stream the first game of the UFL. Hey, everyone with a uh, fiver. Uh, saw a cute dog. Okay, out a good video. So awesome. Looking forward to whatever the plan is for this year. Glad to be part of this community. Hey, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Fire. Perna said he'd uh, beat the rock with a rock on GPS. Just put a piece of paper on his head because paper always beats rock. You ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. Aguilar tour. Our truth. Tom Grassi there. I said it. Uh, listen, I'd be honored. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at you now. That's that's the next drinking game. It's every time. The Rock said, look at you now to Cody Rhodes on Monday night. You do a shot. Over under three minutes before you're just in a coma. Nick Witter, happy Friday. I hope you have a dope time at Raw. Oh, dude, I'm so pumped. I am so effing pumped. Let's go. Going to Monday night Raw. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so much fun. And next weekend, baby. Whoa, whoa, WrestleMania. Oh, can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, Brad, Tom, tell me about the new kickoff rules. If you think they'll keep it going forward. 
I'm excited to see what it looks like in the NFL. Obviously, the XFL has been doing it, and this is a modified version of it, but I do think that it's a way to try and revive that play because last year is basically just, hey, <laughs> we're just going to kick a, a touchback. Ghost with fire, week seven, Packers 20, Broncos 21. The reason lost a blocked extra point. Damn, the Packers are sucking in that franchise. Yeah, that's no good. Jordan Fire, Tom, do you ever get uh, listen around inside me? No, I have not yet. I have not. I have not had free time to myself Sunday. Sunday was the last, Sunday was my first day, like real true day off since November. So yeah, I have not had a chance yet. I do have it written down though. So I do. I have that. I have sleep token written down. Uh, there's a few other ones I have written down. It's like on a, uh, it's on a piece of paper upstairs. Just do it 20 time. I remember going to work on Tuesday at 5.30 in the morning. Be absolutely shocked by seeing the footage of the ship crashing into the Baltimore Bridge on one of the news channels. Prayers go to the victim's families. Oh, it was awful. Absolutely awful. Just to like wake up to that too. Yeah, absolutely horrible. Um, legitimately a tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. Thoughts with uh, Baltimore. We talked about that last week too. It just, it's just a freak accident. Like it's just, you know, it's rough. It is rough. So we'll see. We'll see. Is the Attitude Era back? Um, I don't know if it's back. I am curious, though, when they go to Netflix, because I feel like Netflix is going to allow them to be a lot more edgy, if you will, but not Adam Copeland. Sam, what if I can't stay tonight due to being with family? Oh, birthday tomorrow. Let's go. It's celebrate family. Just want to say I appreciate this community so much. Appreciate you, Sam. Let's go. Enjoy it. You enjoy it. I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ghost with Terror. Week 8 is back at Lambeau against the Purple Incarnation of Satan. Bad news. Everyone in the squad is healthy. Good news. You're not playing against me. I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping. I am hoping. We'll see, though. We will see. Sam, I hope you enjoy that birthday. I hope it's great. I hope it's freaking fracking fantastic. Lone Buccaneer, happy freaking fracking birthday. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Jaster. Hey, Tom. Gonna be watching the kickoff the UFL tomorrow. Also, I saw my girlfriend today. There you go. Uh, yeah, enjoy it. I'm not gonna be able to watch it, but enjoy it. Enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. I hope they do well. I hope it can be used kind of like as a feeder league into the NFL. So, damn it, Tur. Think Chiefs rugby player would be any good? I mean, you never know, but I mean, the fact that more and more people are getting those opportunities and like they're crossing over from different sports and stuff, I always appreciate it. And I think that's really cool. Logan went up, Fanny! Boop! For the kitty! If you had one wrestler join the NFL, who would you pick? And why would they go to the Packers for the Green and Gold Curse and the Purple Incarnation of Satan? Hell yeah, they would. All right, listen. This is easy. This is easy money. Easy, easy, easy. Not getting The Rock, not getting Seth Rollins. Not get not getting any of that, right? You're not gonna get Chad Gable. Athletic, very athletic. Don't want him as a football player, right? In the past, I would have said Brock Lesnar, but you know, <laughs> things going on there. So that's <laughs> no more, no more, no boss. You could go with the tribal chief, of course, also played football, Roman Reigns, right? So you could acknowledge him and he could go to the Green Bay Packers. So you could, you could go down that road. Could. Or are you also going current, current wrestler? Or are we going like any time in their prime? Because that also, that, make, that makes a significant difference, okay? But the real answer is the great Kali as a tight end and you only put him in when you're inside the 10-yard line. I know he's not running really fast, but who the hell is going to be blocking that? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He just walks into the end zone. You just have a really good offensive line, can kind of hold him back for like four seconds, and then you just go, boop, done. Great Kali. Bam. It's a touchdown every time. Perfect, perfect, perfect cheat code. God's with a terror. W Cobb Scooter MVP. Let's go. Uh, Tree Kevin Owens. I like that one. Five is Sean. Oh, Sean Morley. Val Venus and shaved his head later on. Yes. Perna Jim Cornette. Tom Sting. Use the face for tease the heel turn often. You know what? I'll take that. I'll take like 90 Sting. I'll do that. I'll do that. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Linda. Thanks for a membership. Appreciate you. Linda. Mr. Clinton. Would a tenor? I'm thinking about getting either a Derrick Henry Titans, Joe Mixon Bengals, or an Austin Eckler Chargers jersey, and I'm having trouble deciding. Because they're all on sale? I would. If you're going to do one of those, I'd probably do Derrick Henry. I do Derek Henry. He's a legendary player. He's going to go in the Hall of Fame, like if he goes in as a as a Titan. So I'd probably I'd probably go down that road. You're going to get one of them because Joe Mixon's good and stuff, but he's not Derek Henry. You know, 
I am going to WrestleMania, Jacob. I am, and I'm so freaking excited. Tom, convince me to watch The Leftovers. People keep telling me it's good, but I watched the pilot episode twice and I didn't like it at all. Drip, yeah, okay. All right, here's where I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to sell you on it. Yes, the pilot episode's good. It's not great, in my opinion. And I will tell you, if you're not into, like, slow burns, it's not going to be your show, and that's okay. But if you invest, like, in the show and go like, all right, I'm going to watch the first season. If you don't like it by the end of the first season, it's just not the show for you. I think it gets so much better in the second season too. It's a really great like character study and character development show. Now I will say like same creators as lost. So like all the mysteries and stuff, they're not going to get answered. There's definitely going to be confusing stuff, but I think it's one of the best like character development shows I've seen. I really, really enjoy. I actually own it. it it's, it's pretty damn awesome. Pretty damn good. Just a turn. I don't want to sense the presence of Blood Demon. I sense something. A presence I've not felt since. <laughs> Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Best available free agent is? Uh, right now? Who even left? Who even left? Because I saw Hassan Reddick go to the uh, Jets. That's really big for the Jets. Definitely, 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 definitely. Jackson, Maybe. It depends on what kind of running back you are, but maybe. I don't know how much the value is going to go up, but running backs got paid this uh, free agency, so I think they're kind of already back. Um, best NFL free agents. I don't even know who's around. Uh, yeah, Simmons is around, but someone will get him for, like, a, a pretty damn good deal. I don't want this. Okay, this is this is not even accurate. Okay, cool. Okay, this list is wrong. Do, 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 do. Give me something that's like updated a little bit. Okay, none of this is updated. Okay, cool. Uh, this is really not useful. Wow, these charts suck. No wonder people watch. You're garbage. <sighs> what the hell, man? Yeah, Clowny. I saw he got signed to. Um, who the hell? Still? I'm I'm still trying to. No, don't. Of, uh, no, I'm not going to a paywall. Good God, man. Why can't I just see? Yeah, Simmons is... I'm not... Nope, I'm not paying for that. I'd probably say Simmons is probably near the top. Um, are Gilmore still available? No, i go with Simmons over that. Kai Becton, blah, blah, blah. No, BJ's not there anymore. Yeah, I'd probably say Simmons. Simmons is probably a good one. I mean, because I think he could still play. I just don't know how much longer, but he could still play. So... LT Gray with it to her. Friendly reminder, the Chiefs are back-to-back -back champs. It's true. It is true. Uh, double O, what a fire. You're equally excited, terrified how competitive the North will be this season. I hope the Lions can do it again. No, I'm excited. I'm absolutely excited because, like, there's going to be higher expectations for the Packers, 100%, but, no, it's a super young team, and, like, they're going to get some weapons in the draft, and I'm really excited to see how Josh Jacobs is going to do. I'm excited to see how the development of the young wide receiver is going to continue. Jordan Love, of course, and then, of course, McKinney. Come on. Super at 20. Top. Earlier this month, Australia's national rugby team played its opening two games at Allegiant. Yes, in Vegas. Yes. Wonder if you knew about it, if both rugby codes uh, could grow in the States. Yes, actually. So I got asked a, a bunch of times about rugby because I know that they went to Vegas um, just literally from the fan base in the community, mostly from Friday Night Q&A. Um, I don't know. I mean, because we have rugby here. It's just not obviously as, as popular. Like, um, like it's played at like schools and stuff like that. But I don't know. I think it's uh, it, it would it would have a little bit of a way to go, but I will say like if you see maybe because I don't think like the NFL is ever going away, but if you get to a point where like there is a need for an alternative that isn't football but is like a hard hitting sport, maybe maybe. Jaster to fire. Uh, UFL is on ABC, ESPN, Fox, FS1, another channel I can't remember, and it'll be streamed on ESPN Plus and Fox Sports. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm excited. I hope it does well. Rex or Fire, who'd win a fight between Teddy Roosevelt and Charles DeCaul, and who was the better military leader? Ooh, also pulling out a Charles DeCaul on freaking Friday night Q&A. I respect it. I respect it. I think Teddy would win, though. I think Teddy... Yeah, I think Teddy would win. I do. Uh... Call might be better though as a uh, military leader. That's a tough one. A tough one. Glenn with a fire. Can't wait for the Bills Chiefs revenge game. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Josh Tertura be on Sirius XM Radio, too. Well, there you go. That's great that they're everywhere. Con Man of Fire, my uncle passed away this morning. Oh, I'm sorry, Con Man. Was a big Packers fan. So get a Steelers go to Super Bowl. Steelers go to Super Bowl, indeed. I'm very sorry for your loss and you and your family. I hope things get better soon. I hope things get better soon, my friend. Do you look with Tour, uh, Bill's 24-25 record prediction? I think they win about 10 games. Yeah, I think that's right around where they'll be. Right around 10. Right around 10. Watching uh, Tom and the Little Mermaid. The cross collaboration that everyone wants. That everybody wants. True. Favorite Steelers player? Right now, it's probably TJ Watt. Probably TJ Watt. Okay, hold on one second. Um, Hold on one sec. Going at 990, AFC South and NFC South champs. AFC South, I'm going to go with the Strouds because they'll blow up the moon if I say otherwise. NFC South is either going to be Falcons or Buccaneers. Uh, I'll say Falcons right now, but I'd lean towards the Buccaneers. I would. I would. Uh, okay, hold on one second. Let's do, 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 put the, hold on one second. I'm trying to fix a thumbnail. And then have an arrow or something. Got a good text. Bam. All right. Sorry about that. Boom. Trying to get something uh, a little straightened out. Straightened out. It's a hope that does kill. Yes, it is a hope that kills. I actually spoke to a Jets fan today. Um, shout out to Ben because Ben is doing um, he's doing a project uh, for college. And I told him I'd help out because he was, like, looking at, uh, like, sports media personalities using uh, – their platform to like raise money and stuff and for like advocacy and like all that great stuff. So yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a Jets fan. She's a Jets fan. I'm like, my condolences. My condolences. Yes, Jacob going to be on raw this raw, not the one after mania though. Not that one. Tom Edifier. No wonder you're a history teacher. Can't read properly. He literally said a uh, big Packers fan when I wrote, he was a big Steelers fan. <laughs> Did I really? <laughs> Oops. At least I said Steelers got a Super Bowl. That's how you know. That's how you know. Stairs got your ball, but the Packers gonna be there too. That's it. That's it. That sounds about right. That sounds about. I wonder why. Must have Packers on the brain. Why? Favorite player in the NFC North, not on the Packers. Mercedes Lewis on the Chicago Bears. Is he even still there? Is he even still there? Or did he get cut after uh, this past year? Hmm. Hmm. Listen, it's always go Pack Go, baby. It's always go Pack Go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's on the Fields trade. I mean. Obviously, it's embarrassing for the Bears, but they're going to go get Caleb Williams, so I don't think they really care too much. Um, and then they got to hope that Russell Wilson doesn't play well so that they can at least get a fourth out of it. Yeah, just not just not a great ending. His free agent's contract expired. Thank you, Zach. Greatly appreciated. There you go. All right, so not him then. Uh, it would have been Jamal Williams on the Lions. I think Justin Jefferson should be paid $100 million so the Vikings can't afford him. I'd say... I do like the sun god. I do like Amon Ross St. Brown. I would say Aaron Jones on the Vikings, but, you know, right now he's broken my heart a little bit. So, not right now. Not right now. Not right now. Justin, what a tenor. Uh, say, watch a new hope in the banter between Solo Luke and Leia is honestly my favorite part of the film. Would somebody get this big uh, walking carpet out of my way? She's rich. Listen, it's a gem. Harrison Ford's also, like, incredible as Han Solo. Justin at 20, thoughts on uh, Reddick as an Eagles fan. Uh, stinks uh, that we only got a conditional third, but I trust Howie. He's 30, asking for a major extension when we need uh, to extend Smith, and Nolan Smith had a year to develop. Yeah, you better hope Nolan Smith is looking good. Because um, Reddick, yeah, I mean, he's played really, really well, right? Because he was on the Cardinals, and he played well. And he went to the Eagles, and he played well. So I get it. He's like an aging player. But I I'm assuming, like, he's going to probably get a, a good amount of money. He's going to get a bag. Well, if I actually talk about Bills facing their ex-punter in the Chiefs game, ultra revenge game. Oh, that's true. That's true. Callie, last day in Purple Satan territory. My Packer side has been showing up here. Listen, it's got to pop out. It's got to pop out. Come on. Brian Branch. You know what? Brian Branch, indeed. <laughs> We're taken. Welcome to the posse. Nick, what if I at noon, Tom? Watch a video about Lambo. That's a great one. Been watching a long time. Hope you visit Wisconsin again soon. Go Pack. Hey, let's go, Nick. Yeah, I'll be back uh, for spring uh, spring training. Jesus. I'll be back for uh, training camp, at least. Plays. Eat it, Tom. Get out what you love post-World War I. Want to hear thoughts on the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare movie coming out soon. Because I love World War II, Cold War era cloak and dagger stuff. 
I will be very honest with you. I have no idea about that movie. Nope. I haven't seen a single preview. I also really haven't watched a ton of TV besides like Shogun. So yeah, I could not even tell you what that's about. No shot. Got no shot. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just don't know anything about that movie. Is it? It's a post World War II movie, or like, what is it? Or is it just like an espionage thing? You know. Okay. How much do you think Ayuk makes with his extension? I mean, he's probably gonna average. He had a good year last year. How much is he gonna average? Is he gonna like fifteen twenty maybe? Uh, who's the highest paid wide receiver right now? Before, before it's Justin Jefferson. All right, so he's getting 30. I would say, like, maybe, like, 20, 22, somewhere around there, probably. Probably. I'd imagine. I'd imagine. Nah, I'm not gonna watch the UFL. UFL. It's nothing against, I just don't have the time. Don't have the time yet, but at some point, you know, maybe I'll check it out. Just ain't today. <laughs> not this day. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. So also we uh yeah we're over six thousand uh, dollars raised for we're gonna do that for a little bit longer. Uh, I already have the wheel wheel look the wheel. So don't worry. Oops, don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna add everyone. I see some more people added uh, some donos to that as well. So don't worry. I will update that and make sure. But yes, we'll rock a rock. We'll roll and then I will uh. Spin the wheel. Okay. God's gonna fire. My cat's so spoiled that I got her a kitten so she won't be by herself when I go back to work in May. <gasps> Are they getting along already? And it's adorable. Tyler was able to get a job promotion after being laid off earlier this month. Thanks for inspiration to all of us. Let's go, Tyler! Get that promotion, baby. Let's go! Let's go! That's amazing. Hell yeah, let's go. Congratulations. Nick with a fiver. Uh, I think it's going to be an extremely difficult fight for the North Division next season. Yeah, I'm curious, you know, with a rookie QB, what the, both the Bears and the Vikings look like. Um, that'll be interesting, but yeah, it'll be a dogfight between the Lions and the Packers. I'm, I'm excited. I'm very excited. What do you think is a better comedy, Spaceballs or Airplane? I have thought about that question many, many times in my life because those are two of my favorite comedies of all time. I think as a kid, I liked Spaceballs more because I really loved Star Wars. If I have to go just from a pure comedy standpoint, I think it's Airplane. Airplane is one of those movies that you can watch legitimately 20 times and you will see something different because like there's so many like minute details and like little jokes that like, like go over heads or just like they're in the background. And it's so good. Like, even, like, the PA systems, like, arguing the white zone is for loading and unloading passengers only. Like, it's just in the background. So, Spaceballs is amazing. I love Spaceballs. Like, it legitimately is one of my favorite movies of all time. I think as a comedy, Airplane might have an edge. It might. Just to turn, top reference to my Nolan Smith part. Eagles like the Packers, let players develop. Uh, shock, I know. Like, we drafted Dallas Goddard despite having Zach Ertz. Uh, yeah, that's true. After a year, I said that worked. Sure. I mean, you look at Lucas Van Ness, right? He was also, like, super raw coming out of college, so he definitely needs to learn some technique. But he started playing a little bit better. Rashawn Gary, he was a top 15 pick. Packers, like, took their time getting him out there, too. So, yeah, sometimes it works. Scott, what at 20? Todd, I didn't feel like myself, so I entered a challenge at my gym. I was to kick my ass back into gear. Turns out I won the whole damn thing. I lost 15 pounds and 11.92% body fat auditioning for Newsies going for Jack Kelly. Damn. Damn, Scott. All right. We out here. We out. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Come on now. Come on. I like that. I like that. We've been talking about it. We've been working out. We've been feeling good. Oh, uh, today I finished that. Uh, I finished the bike series. I was biking in Thailand. And uh, oh my God, it was... It was the last one, and it was like, it's an endurance ride. I was like, oh, okay, like, whatever. And it was like 45 minutes long. I was like, okay, that's not too bad, whatever, around like nine-something miles. I think for the first 60 seconds, it was fine. And then for 43 minutes, it was all uphill. And it was around bends. So I'm like... <laughs> I'm watching Invincible because I'm like trying to like keep my mind off of it. And plus I don't have time to watch Invincible. So this is the only time I can when I'm doing this. And I'm 
pedaling as hard as I can. And I like look up at the screen and I see a bend. I'm like, okay, it's probably gonna go downhill now. It never went downhill. All we did was up. All we did was up. So yeah, no, I was lied to. I was to say, I was like, oh man, this downhill is gonna feel so good. And then I was like, all right, there's 15 minutes left. It's probably within the next like 10 minutes. And then it's just gonna be like whoo, all the way down. Nope. This mofo got off his bike in his virtual screen and he like went into a temple and I'm still pelling uphill because they're still like, sorry, it's eight to climb. It was up to 10 to climb, 10. So I'm going to the freaking moon and I'm pedaling and this guy's just walking around. I'm like, where's the incline? So yeah, wasn't, uh, my, wasn't my best day, but we finished it. We finished it, played strong, finished strong. It, it was a little painful though. Just a little bit. Uh, James Victor, which QB do you want the Vikings to get the least? Um, Jaden Daniels, I think, would worry me a little. Would worry me a little bit. A little bit. God, thank you for the tenor. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Uh, Jason Victor, saw an Airplane when I was seven. It was funny then in a classic now. Spaceballs predicted DVR tech when they watched Spaceballs VHS. That's true. When will then be now? Soon. Exactly, Dean. That's what the parents meant when they said uphill both ways. That, that was it. Just to a fire, raspberry. There was only one man who would dare give me the raspberry. Lone Star. It's so good. Like, and that's the thing. It's so epic. It's, if you like Star Wars 2, I think Spaceballs is significantly better. It's just so good. Derek! With a 20, Ian Tom, hope you're well. With the finale of Coach approaching, have you thought about maybe doing an updated lore stream? Might help with missed details along the way or those who are new, just an idea, thanks. Derek, yes. I actually, so here's the issue. Here's the slight issue. I don't know when I would do it. Maybe I could pull it off in May, maybe. I was thinking not only do we do another lore stream, I was thinking of doing a watch along everything all of coach well besides obviously the final season all of the sagas not in one stream but just to sit there and i can give you like obviously i can like tell you about stories and connection stuff but i can give you like all the behind the scenes stuff of like what went into shooting certain scenes and like all that stuff because i remember almost all of that stuff so yeah it, it would take a it would take a like a couple days but i would do that if that was something that people were interested i would definitely do that ghost with tech going to des moines uh next weekend uh that's the place where i discovered the discord server and became ghost i'm gonna share week eight not next week but the following week appreciate you appreciate oh uh, no so also also we didn't get space balls too the search for more money uh it is official official i have rebooked the vacation, so I am going on. I'm going on vacation. I'm gonna go away for a week. Don't worry, there will still be content. So I'm gonna miss one Friday night Q and A. I'm gonna leave the night of the 11th. So that's a Thursday. There'll be content that day. I'll be gone the 12th. Then obviously the weekends, whatever. And I'm coming back the 19th. There'll still be Friday night Q and A the 19th. So we'll, we'll see. And I know in this economy, I know. First time in five years, baby. Come on. First time in five years. I need one vacation. I need one. Just give me one. Give me one. <laughs> Jake, vice for a guy graduating high school. Get his first job in a couple months. Also, it'll be Q&A next week. Yes, there will be Q&A next week. That won't be stopped. That's totally fine. Um, and yeah, I mean, just try and still, if you're, I don't know, are you going to, um, College or you're going right into the workforce. If you're going right into the workforce, like that's great. Just, I would say, make sure, I don't know, like there's an element of like, make sure you still live your life a little bit. And I don't mean like you have to go out and party all the time. It's just like, figure out, you know, like have experiences and stuff and don't just make all of life work. The guy who all his entire life is his work says. Me. All right, we do watch party. Star Wars too. I was doing Star Wars lines as I was watching Dune. 24 hour plus stream. Hold on. LQ! We need math! Somebody, somebody get LQ. How long is the lore again? How long is the entire thing? Uh, cause now I got an idea. 
Uh, I got an idea. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But yes, maybe. Just a turn. Next history lesson. What chapter, Mr. Grassy? Yeah, I got to go through my history lessons. Uh, I didn't get to do I was going to do it last week. And I just didn't get a chance to get my uh, hard drive. So, yeah, I got plugged in. It won't be next week. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping maybe either in April or like one in May. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. We'll see. Or when I get to the actual off season. I know. I know. So selfish. Nikki, you're saying, Grass Posse, Coach Saga, Watch Party, and Charity Stream? That was my idea. I literally could go, oh, man. If it's like, if it's like 20, it's, I think it's over 24 hours at this point. Because I could just leave during, like, you know, a random, like, weekly saga and do, uh, all right. I can try something. I can try something. Just do it a fire. Do you wonder how the ending of the NFC East story would have ended if the Giants or Cowboys or Eagles would have won? Who would have died in those scenarios? Oh, I, I've, I've talked about this a lot. Yeah, Bruce and Springsteen were going to die. Like, I had the whole thing, like, thought out in my head. I've talked about it on screen before. So, literally, I was going to have, like, if uh, the Cowboys or the Eagles won, the Giants would have been fine. But if the Cowboys or the Eagles won, yeah, Bruce and Springsteen were going to die. And it was laying on the grass across from one another and Bruce going... I am Bruce. And then like, you just have a shot on his face, like just on Bruce's face and there's silence. And then like, there's a long pause and then it goes to Springsteen who has passed. And then Bruce just like turns over and, and dies. Oh yeah. No, it would have been heartbreaking. I was going to rip people's hearts out of their chest. So Mr. What a fiver got the Henry Jersey. And yes, cause it's on sale. Also had a gift card. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, all right. That's right. That's right. Africa! Thanks for the five memberships. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Derek, but for the love of Moses, please uh, do the watch along. All right. Okay. 26, 45, or 27, 45. All right. I appreciate it. Goes to Turret. Thanks for the heads up. Safe travels. Appreciate you. Winter! Love space balls in the 80s, kids. Still do. But never realized it was a spoof till I finally saw the OG Star Wars when it was re released in the 90s. Yeah. I know, I do know some people who watch space balls and like didn't watch Star Wars. Re it to her. Let me guess 24 hour watch along chair stream. Chair! But that's the thing, like, I would want to, I would want to, like, give that commentary and feedback. I could probably just, like, walk, like, I could go, like, do stuff or, like, eat or, like, take a nap or something, like, during one of, like, the sagas, at least for, like, a little bit. I'll try that. Christian Fire, what match are you most excited for at Mania? Will there be a watch along? There won't because I will be at Mania. I'm super excited. I've been since 24, so this will be this will be really really fun. Um, most excited? I'm not gonna lie. I'm really excited for the World Heavyweight match. I think it's gonna be really fun. Like McIntyre and Rollins, I really think they're gonna like tear it down. I think Gunther and Sammy, while the build really hasn't been great, I think it will be a good wrestling match. It'll be fun. Um, Cody and Reigns, obviously, just for the spectacle of it all, and same with the tag. Like it'll just be really good, but. I'm also, like, really excited for the women's matches, too. Like, Rhea and Becky, I, I'm very curious to see, like, how they're going to... uh, How, like, the flow of that match is going to go. Because I, I feel like... I mean, it's just me. Like, Monday night, because I've been watching a lot more because, like, I'm really invested in this kind of build-up to Mania. It's been really good. And, like, one of the stories that kind of just hasn't been getting a ton of time was the Rhea and Becky one. And Rhea is so over, like, even though she's a heel. Like, she's so over right now. And so, like, when Becky does promos with her, I don't know. Like, it it seems, like, a little over the top. And I'm like, it's tough because, like, you... It's already going to be an uphill climb for Becky. Like, everybody loves Becky. She's fantastic, and she is. But, like, right now, it's, like, it's Rhea. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I hope Rhea retains. I 100% hope Rhea retains. I think it's going to be great. But, yeah, I'm really, really excited for that match. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Jonathan Fire. Uh, why was Finn and Wildfly on the free agency script video? Did they miss something? Are they going to cross over the script videos? No, they weren't. No. That was, a, that was a whole different video anyway. Yeah, no. That was just me having some fun. Joseph Ventura, NFC North will be uh, very competitive this year. It's true. It's true. Tim with 20. Should I get my hopes up again for next year or just chill out until halfway through the season? Jets fan. Chill out until halfway. Show that they can make it to week eight. And then let the hope grow. Ludacris. Ludacris Speed with a fire. Had a nice vacation seeing friends in Atlanta. Saw the Georgia Aquarium, Coke Factory, Falcon Stadium, the outline of a car fire on I-85. Oh, 
Yes. So the Falcon Stadium, amazing, right? I heard the Georgia Aquarium was very, very nice. So, so I haven't been since 24. No, I haven't been since 24. I'm sorry, I meant WrestleMania 24. So yeah, 16 years. Yeah, 16. So I went to 23 and I went to 24. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Benjamin Fire, some great suggestions for some food uh, for next weekend. Try Veg and Charlie was a sinner. Missed you when you visited last summer. Oh, in Philly? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All right. I appreciate that. I'm going to be I'm gonna be looking for him. David Fire, honest opinion. Lost over 60 pounds in the last year. Hey! <laughs> Freaking fracking congrats, David. That's amazing. Let's go, baby. Got myself a lion jersey. So Hutch, St. Brown, Branch, or Laporta? Ooh. Me, personally, I think you... First of all, I don't think you're going to go wrong with I, any of those. I also think the Brian Branch thing is more... Ele- like, he was great last year. Like, he was elevated more because of this, too. I would say it's between Hutch and St. Brown, and I might lean Hutch. Just because, like, Michigan guy, the story's amazing. Like, he is developing really well. Laporta, I'm sure, is going to be fine, but, like, you want to see, like, another season, in, for me, just, like, economically, before buying a jersey because they're expensive. So, yeah, I would probably go Hutch right now. But St. Brown, you can't go wrong with that either. So, and congratulations again. It's amazing. Ender, welcome to the boss. Appreciate you, appreciate you. So, WrestleMania 24 is the last one I cared enough to watch. There's been some good ones in between. Yeah, some very meh ones in between, but there's been some good ones too. It's a good story with Hutch, you know? It's a good story. College basketball? I don't mind it. I just, I've watched like the opening games, like some of them, that was it. Milky the Turret, should Packers trade the first uh, pick for Sertan? No. I, I mean, it'd be cool. I mean... I mean, damn. It'd be so much fun, but... No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It'd be so much fun, though. It'd be so much fun. Kel! Appreciate you. Thanks for getting to the membership. Dave with a fire. Big night tonight, Tom. Got my home sleep test ready to go. Time to see just how much... Uh, how bad my sleep apnea is. CPAP machine, here I come! May the force be with you, Darth. Gabriel, good morning from Japan. Currently on vacation with family. I hope you've been well. You're awesome as always. Hey, Gabriel, freaking fracking enjoy Japan. Japan is on there. It is, it, it is on the list. I would, I don't know, top five, but like it's top eight right now. It's top eight right now of places I definitely want to go. I hope, uh, I hope that vacation's amazing. Angela Tarrant, we think the Titans' chances next uh, season is uh, with uh, all the moves they made in the offseason. Still mourning Henry going to the freaking Ravens. Still living in the screaming streets, tighten up. Just keep screaming, just keep screaming. Um, I think that the Titans are going to have a tough time on offense. And the only reason I believe that right now is because they're unproven. I really like Spears. Pollard will be good as an RB2 unless he winds up starting. I don't know about that, but... Spear, I and mean, he's a little healthier, so maybe. But Spears, I think you've seen enough out of him to be a little bit excited. So I'm excited for the run game. You don't know what you have in the Mayo, man, right? So, like, Levis, I think there's just a ton of uncertainty, so I can't commit to them. Their defense, I think, is going to be good. Of course, you got Big Jeff, and with the additions that you've made, like, I think the defense is going to be pretty damn good, and they're going to need to be. Unfortunately, like, the other three teams in the division have also improved significantly. Like, obviously, the Strouds have. And then the Colts with Andy Richardson back should be better. Um, And then Jaguars, if they figure it out, they'll be dangerous. But I think overall, like, it might be a little bit of a rebuild year, Um, but it's going to be more of a, is Will Levis our guy, in my opinion. Yep! Thanks for the five memberships. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Uh, Broski and Turek, thoughts on uh, baseball. Also, go Paco. Go Paco, baby. Um... I, I used to, I was actually talking when I was on the, uh, the Raw Ball podcast yesterday uh, for their fundraiser stream. Uh, I was asked about baseball. I used to go a bunch as a kid living in New York. I used to go to old Yankee Stadium, and I still call it old Yankee Stadium because <laughs> I have not been to new Yankee Stadium, and it's not new anymore. Like, it, it, it's been there for a long, long time. Because, like, the prices got, like, super expensive. It was a pain in the ass to get to. And, like, yeah, it was... Once I really, like, fell in love with football, that was kind of, like, the only sport. And there was another sport that kind of, like, piqued my interest as much. 
Um, now, like, I'm interested in hockey. I'm interested in basketball. Um, but, yeah, baseball, like, I watched a few, like, Game 7s last year, like, in the playoffs. And I was like, okay. Like, yeah, this was exciting. The fact that the game has sped up a little bit, I think, definitely helps. But... For me, it's it's timing is just like is not great, even though it's like during the off season for football, like the playoffs, the World Series, not really a great time. And yeah, it just I don't know if I even have the interest to get back into it. Jordan Matur, Grass Posse meet up in Japan. Let's do it. Big Mo and Fire, where's your dream elimination chamber match? Mine's uh Edge, Undertaker, H3K, Triple H, Eddie and Batista, special ref Ric Flair. All right, so like all in their primes. Can I use non WWE opponents? Thanks, Pizzle. I appreciate you. Like, can uh, can I use like AW wrestlers? Can I do? Because, bro, I see. I wouldn't see. I don't even want this as an elimination chamber. Because, like, I don't even need them to use the chamber. But could you imagine? But like, just putting a ton of technicians in the ring. Like, put a Brian Danielson. Calm down, Daniel Brian, if you need to. Right, throw him in there. Throw in like Kurt Angle. Throw him in there too. Throw in Bret Hart. Throw in like Mister Per. Like there, like there's so many like technicians. Not he who will not be named. Not him. But like there's so many guys. Osprey's great. I I throw Will Osprey in anything and he'll make everything better. But I mean, just like get legit like submission specialists. Throw them in there and just see how they use the cage to try and make it happen. That was something I would watch that in a heartbeat. Heartbeat. Rusky, thank you for the dollar. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, give me Angle and Bret Hart. Uh, it would have fed families. Would have fed families for generations. And I know I saw that because Kurt Angle popped up again because he did like a, a viral video I saw. But no, uh, Kenny Omega said that like he would watch and he watches Kurt Angle just in like how good he was. And like, dude, some of those matches he had in TNA. TNA, like, AJ Styles, too. It was at Christopher Daniels. Like, they were... It was some good stuff. I saw it later on, but it was, uh... It was, like, good, good stuff. All right. Okay. Um... Okay. Sorry, one second. All right. So, sorry, I just had to respond to a message. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I would say. But Will Ospreay right now, yeah, like pound for pound. Look at Perk Angle indeed. Perk Angle indeed. TNA Kurt's arguably better than peak WWE Kurt. You're not. That's not that controversial. Yeah, no, I I, I, I think you could get a strong argument for that. Sorry, Pepper. I know the kids are talking about wrestling again. I know. I know. All right, real quick. I'm just going to throw in um some more names just for the donations just to make sure because there's a few people who donated. Uh, I'm going to go 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, so you got 11 more minutes. I'll make the cutoff at 8.30. So you got 11 more minutes. If you want to donate to the Challenge Athlete Foundation, it's a great cause. 100% of the proceeds go right to them. I never touch the money. Never do any of that stuff. Goes right to them. They actually already reached out thanking us because they got a message from GoFundMe that was associated with me. And they were very thankful. They're actually going to put the money towards grants for athletes so they can apply for it and they can get the equipment that they need to compete. So that's pretty fantastic. That's pretty fantastic. They're a great organization. They, I think they have a literal perfect uh, rating on Charity Navigator. Like, they're awesome. They are awesome. Uh, oh, Janine! See you. See you. All right, give me one second. Just give me one minute, because I, I, every single time I do, like, a giveaway or so, a raffle or something, I, I, by hand, have to transfer over the names and I know that there's probably a much easier way to do this, but like it's also every ten dollars their name goes in again. So yeah, it's a lot of copying and pasting, but that's good because that means we raise a bunch of money for charity. So I ain't complaining. I ain't complaining. All right, so boop, boop, boop. Adam, you go in there. All right, then I just want to make sure so I don't get too far behind, and then I'm doing this for like an hour because that has happened too. That has happened too. Packers Ravens Super Bowl. I would love that. I would love that. I'm very curious to see how the Ravens are going to be this year. I'm very curious. If uh, if Derrick Henry could stay healthy, that's going to be an exciting football team. Like, it's, it, they're just going to be fun to watch. So, I mean, there's just so many different ways that they could utilize him. I'm really excited to see him on that offense. I really hope it's good. Really, really hope it's good. 
Big Mo, it's okay. Elimination Chamber with NFL head coaches. Who you got? All right, well, you got to throw Dan Campbell in there, right? Throw Dan Campbell in there. Throw Bill Belichick in there just to see if he can think his way out of it. Then you throw... Uh, I know he's not a coach right now, but it still counts. Then you throw in Mike Vrabel because that man is already built like a wrestler as well, and it'll probably come down to Dan Campbell and Vrabel, right? So that's that's three right now. Then from there, McVay. He's too pretty. He's too pretty, but he's also low-key jacked. He made sure he took his shirt off like on that hot tub scene in uh, uh, Hard Knocks. So, yeah, throw in there. He can, he can hold his own. He can hold his own. And then Mike Tomlin. I think Mike Tomlin would kick some ass. Throw Mike Tomlin in there. That'd be great. And then <laughs> Andy Reid. <laughs> Andy Reid. Throw in Andy Reid. I want to see him off the top rope. I want to see him off the top rope. I do. I want to see him do a splash. Justin Fire, Angle Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect Macho Man, Y2J Steamboat, Perfect Elimination Chamber matchup. Yeah, that'd be pretty badass. God, you see Macho Man and Steamboat? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Austin Fire hurts a little bit, knowing that we could have had Gunther versus Lesnar at Mania. Obviously, we know the reasons why it's not happening. It just hurts. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were supposed to have, right, Rollins and uh, Punk, and, like, there was a bunch of stuff. But I'm also not complaining because, like, I I'm really happy Drew is, like, having time to shine. Like, them just going out there and just cutting it on the mic was was gold. It was gold. But, yeah, I understand that, too. I actually, I, I don't know, like, because the belt eventually has to come off Gunther. But, like, the, here's the issue that they're in right now, right? I'm assuming Cody and Seth, I'm sorry, Cody and uh, Drew are going to win. I'm assuming. There's potential that, like, Seth retains, but I really think he's going to lose, and I think Cody's going to wind up winning. That's how I see it going. So Cody's going to hold on to that belt for a good long while. Then you have Damian Priest, and I don't think they just know what to do anymore with him. So at some point, he's going to cash in. I don't know if he's going to be successful or not, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then you have a guy like Gunther, like who should have a world title run or be in the world title picture if he drops the intercontinental. But if he doesn't, then like, how long are you going to keep it on him? Like, are you just going to keep on breaking records? Like, that's cool. It's just, then you're starting to build it up to like a Roman Reigns, almost like level. And then he can only lose it at like SummerSlam or WrestleMania. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to be interesting seeing what happens post mania. Ted, welcome to the posse. Big Mo, do we leave in pits and fantasy again? No, I don't. And it's not because I don't think he's going to do well. I think there's a really good chance that he does well. I just refuse to get my hopes up because I have drafted Kyle Pitts way too often in fantasy football. And I refuse to be hurt again. I refuse. I will miss out on him just to not get hurt, which sounds counterproductive because it is. We with the folding chair? Come on now. Come on now. Maybe. Maybe to bash a Berlin challenge, yeah. Cody, Seth, Priest. Yeah, it'd be crazy. It'd be fun. It is definitely, definitely... Oh, come on. Andy Reid. Rock splash to the table. Let's go. Uh, I wouldn't highlight. Yeah, no, it's Packers all the way down. It's Packers all the way down. I, like, I don't mind teams, you know, but yeah, it's Packers. That's it. Patrick Holmes. <laughs> Holmes is Triple H. So, oh, man. Now... Rouse. Hold on, because now I'm thinking about Motorhead as Kermit the Frog, like Patrick Meehomes. <sighs> now all I'm thinking about is like the Muppet version of Patrick Mahomes singing Motorhead. It'd be pretty great. It'd be pretty great. <clears throat> Patrick Meehomes. That's a little bit more Marvin the Martian. Kermit the Frog here. All right, that was a little bit better. Time to play the game. <laughs> it would be that high pay game. That, yep, that's, that's what it would be. But the problem is, is that you have to do the laugh afterwards, but it'd be a Kermit laugh. <laughs> it would be something like that. It would be time to play the game at the highest Kermit pitch ever. 
And then going, <laughs> that would be that art. We created art. Create art. Somebody in this community is talented enough to do it. Make it happen. Dylan and Fire, did you catch Drew using the lyrics for the song? Oh, Stan, yes, it was so good. Yes, yes, yes. That Just like that whole promo was just so good. It was so much freaking fun. Oh, it was great. It was great. Because like Punk at times too, like he didn't get the reactions I thought he would. Like I, he's obviously super over in Chicago still, but like they held their own. And I will say, I like, I love Seth Rollins. I think he's really, really good. Um, it's when Seth, I like the, the goofy stuff is fine. It's good. Like he plays the character well, but when like Seth wants to like deliver a serious promo, bro, he crushes it on the mic. He's so good. Cody, Tom, cheers, my friend. Appreciate you, my brother. Keep being you. Thanks for all you do. I appreciate you, Cody. Hope you're doing well. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Mm. Bad with the tenor. First off, my son Keegan wanted to say hi. What's going on, Keegan? Good to see you. Uh, second, to be Drew and Damien cashing in on Cody. They're going to build that uh, Hyper Heat for Judgment Day and extend the Cody Hero arc for another year. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on. Bro. <laughs> That would be if Cody held it like not even for five minutes. I I would honestly respect that so much because of how many people would hate it. It was like Roman winning last year. I was like, you know what? Do it. Why not? Why not? That that would be amazing. He's having this a moment. He's just like the American nightmare. He's fulfilled the dream. Music hits, <laughs> comes down, Claymore, like, just buries him, beats him. Rock comes out, he beats him up, and then just <laughs> Damien Priest walks out of Mania 40, the champ. I would laugh my ass off so hard. I would just have to stand up and clap. At Mania, if that happens, I will just stand up and clap. Janine, with a fire. Don't anything about WWE, but I know Tom will go 9-8 for the season with a good defense. Go Steelers! That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And it's consistent. So, Jeff with a 252. Motorhead's uh, Ace of Spades, sung by Kermit the Frog. Yes of Spades! Yep. Justin with a fire. Angle Shane, King of the Ring, 2001. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tom with two. I'm more excited about the Chargers' schedule vid than the draft. That's fair, honestly. That's fair. Cecilia, what a fitting! Like kidding, guys! Oh my God, what does that mean? Packers during the off season of oh that vid, great video. Hope everyone's doing well. I had so much fun with that video, and I actually remember I had so many issues with that video because like I loved it, and I didn't even I scripted out like some of it, but the majority of that was improv, and what stayed in there wound up being improv. I remember having to do a bunch of reshoots because there was a bunch, there was a couple characters that were out of focus. But the issue was I had so many lines that I was like, all right, I need so many different Packers fans. And so I had, they were like stuffed. So I had one here and I have to keep it within frame because if I go out of frame where the other character is supposed to be, you kind of lose the suspension of disbelief. I'd like that. That's one of those things that I 99.9% .9 will always go back and fix because it will drive me insane regardless of how much of a pain in the ass. So then I had a person here a character here, a character like right here, there, 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 and there. So like I had all, and the, this room is not that big. So to film that video was like a nightmare, but damn, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. And it was just like, it encapsulated everything that was going on. Hope you're doing well. Jordan Fire, Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr., Kurt Angle, Bret Hart, Chad Gable, and oh my God, yes. Yep, yep, I'll watch it for an hour. Austin fired uh, one better at the cash in due to MSG. They took the title from his son at the garden. Oh my God. That would be brutal. Noah. Love you, Grassi. Thanks for all you do. What's the best part of being your own boss? Now my boss is a complete and total a-hole and I am my own boss. Um, you know, what's like, I, it's not even being your own boss. And yes, I have memorized the camera angles. It's not even being your own boss, which is amazing. Like the thing that I enjoy the most is at the end of the day, when it comes to doing this and like holding all this up, like shout out to Johnny Barks. Like he 
edit, like helped edit the, um, he did the majority of the editing on the video for Lambo. And during the season, like he edits like three videos a week because he edits predictions, he edits rankings, and then an occasional reaction video if I'm streaming and doing both at the same time. Uh, and then post game. So I think just knowing that I took a risk and left a very stable job and was like, okay, like there's no safety net. I have to have my own health insurance now. Like my retirement's gone. My pension's gone. Like that's all. That's no more. And the only, like it, it only comes down to me. And like, that's a lot of pressure, but I love it so much. And like the fact that I was working really hard before I quit teaching. And then when I quit teaching, I worked even harder because I was like, well, now it's go time. And to ha like be where I am and like, you know, like I still work just as hard. Um, like that, that doesn't stop. You saw the free agency hundred percent. There's still content coming out every single day, you know, five days a week. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty damn cool to be like, all right, like I wake up and if I'm going to like, do well today like if i'm gonna make money or anything like that like it just comes down to me and i i really like waking up feeling that because it motivates the ever living hell out of me because i'm like oh all i have to do is work my ass off i've been doing that since i was 14 let's go so yes it is 8 30 i'll give you like 60 seconds just in case uh before we spin the big wheel anybody else wants to donate to the fundraiser uh amazing cause so you could do that down below if you so desire. I'll give you like 60 seconds just because I it did turn 830. Apologies. I went on a rant. That's my bad. My bad. I didn't miss anything. Just trading for San Reddick. I like the... Uh, it depends. I want to see what the contract is, if they're going to wind up giving him a huge contract after this. But I do like that for the Jets defense. I mean, I would I would think the priority is going to be more on the offensive side of the field. But this is... A, that's a great piece. That's a great piece. So. All right. So, again, I'm just going to refresh this. Give me like 30 more seconds. All right, so Jared was in there. So let me just add a couple people who just donated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, 100% of the proceeds going to them. Every 10 bucks enters you in a chance to win. So sign cleats. Two, three, four, five. Oh, Benny Tech, I appreciate you. Wheel, wheel, wheel. You know what's really funny? And this was like kind of an overlooked thing by me because I was just going so fast and was like, okay, I just need to do stuff. If you go back a few years ago when I did the, was it, they think the first December charity stream, I raffled off a PS5 and the, like the kid who won it legit, like Eli, I think he put in 10 or 20 bucks like, and a PS5, like, three years ago, it was, like, really difficult. And I got, I literally got one by accident. And I was like, well, I'll keep it. Like, and I'll, like, and I was like, oh, I, I can donate it. So I got it. And I was like, all right. And somebody donated, like, 20 bucks. And, like, they won a PS5. And I had to ship that. That thing was so expensive to ship. But, yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. It was $10. Yeah, it was 10 bucks. So just a young kid, like, here you go. Here's 10 bucks. And I was like, all right, what a PS5. Dave Witter, Tom, it's a great organization. I coach a youth wheelchair basketball team, and we use this to get kids' wheelchairs to play. Oh, my God, let's go. Let's go! And thank you for what you're doing, David. I appreciate you. I appreciate the hell out of you. Hell yeah. That's freaking dope. Andrew Fire, Tom, just finished watching Chaotic Good video you recently posted. It was moved to tears. Thanks for all the good you do. Thank you for all the good that you helped to do, my friend. Appreciate you. Kelsey, it turned nasty spot of the year so far. It's drinking Hangman's blood. Yeah. I mean, Darby jumping through glass is bad, but no, the, the, the just the Texas death match as a whole. As a whole. Was that even last year? I don't even know. But yeah, that was an amazing, brutal mess. All right. So I'm going to close it off. So it is done. If you want to donate, it's just out of the kindness of your heart now. I uh, just want to establish it. I'll give you like 30 more seconds or just for that kicks in. But okay. It is now closed. No mas. Benny Tech, you were the last one to get in. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Because we are going to spin the mother-loving wheel. Look at that. Johnny Parks donated. Look at that. Look at that. Your name's in there. Ten bucks. You donated. Some of you donated a few hundred dollars, which is crazy. So 
So I appreciate the heck out of you. We are going to spin the wheel. One time, one spin. I'll reach out to you on GoFundMe unless you're literally here right now. Then you can shoot me an email and we'll rock and roll. And you'll get the signed cleats that I ran the 40 in. They are not stinky. I also can lice all them if you want me to. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Spin! The anticipation is rising. Spinning. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh! That's going to be expensive shipping. Luke! Luke! He done did it! And he donated today! I saw it come in! There you go. There you go. Luke, I'm going to have to get that UK address again. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Luke. I appreciate you. Folks, thank you so much to everybody who donated. I'm just going to check the uh, the total here. Appreciate the heck out of you. Let's just take a look here. So we uh, had a goal of $5,000. And hell yeah, look at this. Raised over $6,300. 98 donations. I appreciate the heck out of you. Thank you so much, folks. Um, again, it's a great organization. The Challenge Athletes Foundation. They provide equipment uh, to students and children and athletes who are physically challenged and allows them to compete in sports. And uh, yeah, it's a phenomenal charity. They are one of the best on Charity Navigator and they're a great organization. So even if you didn't win, I appreciate you donating. Uh, it's, all for, it's all for good. And uh, yeah, they're, they're a great organization. So if you decide to donate them in the future, just like Ken Duque Nines that was in the video today, yeah, they're, they're darn good. We spin the wheel for funsies. All right, we'll spin one more time for funsies. Let's do it. Let's do it one more time. Oh, it's just for funsies. Funsies. No winning. All right. Remove. Got Luke can't win again. Yvonne! Great to see a fellow UK member winning. Congrats, Luke. Hey, let's go. We're sp now we're spinning for fun. Again, it's fun. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Fun. There is no winning. And the person who gets this now is going to feel really bad. So, Todd, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Todd. I'm sorry, Todd. I'm sorry. Look what you did to Todd. You did that. You did that. Love you, Todd. Love you, Todd. Appreciate you. Sexy disclaimer, indeed. Also, we're about 90 seconds away from minute 69. Minute 69. Best wishes, Todd. Best wishes, Todd. But... That was good. That was good. Good idea. Good idea. Hell yeah, Luke. That's awesome. All right. I'll get that, uh, I'll get that address again. Oh, all right. As a vegan, where are your opinions on the one teacher vegan on TikTok? I, 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 I don't go on TikTok. Like, I have it, but I don't, I, like, post on it, and that's it. Sorry. I, I've gotten, like, hooked on it once, and I get why it's, like, super easy, but I did it. I think I, like, spent an, an hour on TikTok one time. And, like, I don't have time to begin with. And I, like, turned around. I was like, what did I get out of that? I was like, that just felt gross. And then I put it, I literally uninstalled it. And so every time I post it, I uninstall. Chris Switzer, MLB just hopped on the wrestling belt trend. Ooh, WWE going to make some money. All right. You're going to make some money. Uh, we are 40 seconds away. We are 40 seconds away from the number. The number. One former Packer player back, who would it be? Reggie White. Reggie White, easy. Any generation, Reggie White, because he's like the greatest defensive player of all time. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Guy with a uh, tour, what are your thoughts on the Alcatraz escape? Oh, just like as a history buff? It's cool. Uh, I really didn't like, like that wasn't a huge interest for me though. It's cool. Like I, I know like a little bit of the history, but yeah, it's just kind of like a, an American like folklore thing now. DJ, welcome to the posse. Appreciate you. And ladies and gentlemen, it is minute 69. Nice. Nice. Well done. Well done. I also love, what year did we start this in? It had to be like 2019, 2018. And this has been going on for like five years. That regardless of what's going on in Q&A, it's like, hey, Tom, it's been 69, got to say nice. And I do love that we can raise a half a million dollars for charity in a month. And we also still laugh at the funny number. That is what this channel is and will always be. Always be. 
Some people, they would say, Tom, you've grown too old for these 69 games. And I would reply, not nice. Carolina, what a fire. You felt at times that what you wanted was so far out of reach in a bit of a funk right now. Ooh, I'm sorry to hear that you're in a funk right now. Uh, to answer that, a million percent. Yeah, often. Uh, especially, like, first starting. It's not even... First starting was a little bit, but not even... First starting podcast. I legit just... I just loved football. And I love football. And I love the Packers. So I was like, I'm gonna talk about it. And making that reaction video, like, definitely the dopamine of, like, oh, this is really cool. And then I could never rep replicate that success for, like, years. It took me years to get the views on a video that that views got, like, that that uh, video got. So, no, I, like, I, love. so I didn't really feel like that, oh, like, uh, what the hell, man? Like, I've, I haven't come very far. Like, I'm still so far away, a million percent. Um, and it's, like, as you get closer, too, like, because I told you, like, I tried to quit my job in 2019, and it didn't work out. Like, I went to go be a perm sub, and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't afford it because I just was not making any money doing this because... I never intended to make money on this. Like, because I told everyone knows the story at this point it took three years to make $200. So yeah, like that wasn't even an issue. It was just of growth. That's why, like, if you were here for a hundred K that is still like 500 K was great. Don't get me wrong. And like every hundred K has been memorable 600 K for a different reason, but like getting this, it took me five years to get that. And that was with making PVC lighting, having a terrible soundboard, a terrible mic, a terrible camcorder, and working two jobs, and just being like, I just want to make videos. I just want to keep on, like, doing this because I love it. But, yeah, like, getting that, that was, like, damn, like, that. they can't take that away from me. Like, 100,000 subscribers, like, that would be a YouTuber of, like, wow, like, that's a lot of subscribers. And I was like, cool, like, I have that, like I, all the work that I've done, like that was really, really cool. And then kind of just going forward. Yeah. Then it, it wasn't even about like numbers anymore. It was about, Oh, like I see people getting opportunities that I'm not getting. And like, I'm working really, really hard. And that's why, like I tell people, and I, I think I told that to Ben today during that interview, I was like, you can't pay attention. If you're like in this kind of space, but this also I think applies elsewhere um, because I think this is also something that's very much like taught within our society as well of like looking over, right? Like looking past your lane and you, you understand why, especially because like it's, it's very like flaunted at sometimes at people and like you see it on social media even more. So it's someone, you know, or like someone you watch and you're like, Oh man, like they're at the super bowl or like they're at radio row. Radio row was a big thing for me or they're at the combine or they're at this, this and this. And, like, that's why I tell people, like, 30 and 30, the NFL helped me with two teams, right? Like, that was me, and it was St. Jude who, like, came in around halfway through, and we're like, we could help with some of the stadiums just because we have some contacts, which I'm so appreciative of. But, yeah, like, my contacts were with the Packers and a couple other teams, and, like, people were getting opportunities and creators getting opportunities. And this was more, like, probably around, like, 21-ish, um, maybe 2020, probably around 2020. And I was just like, damn, like, I wish I could get those opportunities, but I wouldn't take on a sponsor. And I didn't have, I don't have an agent. I don't have, there's, I don't have an agency or anything like that because I don't take on sponsors so they can't make money. So I was just like, damn, that like really sucks. Cause it's like outside looking in. So yeah, you will 100% feel that. I then use that to be like, okay, like, well, I'm going to work harder one, but two, like over the years, you kind of learn how toxic that is because when I was doing this, there was creators who would come up. So like shout out to Zach Shomler, who's still making content today, uh, strong opinion sports. So Zach Shomler, I remember when he started, cause like he was watching me and like we would DM on Instagram and he's like, Hey, you know, like I was thinking about starting. I think I like helped him with one of his like first podcasts. I went on his show and I had been making content for years at that point, like a couple years, and Zach just like came on the scene and he put out the Baker Mayfield video. Like I remember this vividly. He put out a Baker Mayfield video, like a, like watching his tape and it blew up. I mean, blew up, blew up. And he shot up to a hundred thousand subscribers. So like he got this like in a couple of years. And I was like, 
bro, I'm like grinding like two jobs. I'm like, damn. And like that moment, like I was in my like, late twenties. I was like, damn, I'm feeling like really down on myself because like this sucks. Like this, it it's not fun to see somebody start and then like just breeze on past you to get something that you've like always wanted. So yeah, no, it was, uh, I felt that, but yeah, over the years though, like you just learn how toxic that is. And then it just like, there's no good that comes with it unless you use it as motivation. So yeah, no, like it's okay to feel down, like you're rocking, but yeah, you just like got to keep on doing what you want to do. You know, if you're doing it to get to this arbitrary goal, like it's not going to, it might feel good for like a, a little bit, but no, you have to do it because you love it. Because like th there's stuff that I do on this channel and just like with the work that I do that I wouldn't do if I didn't love it. So it, it has to start there. Got to start there. Kelsey Tour, 69 minute warning. Also, Mania vlog, please. Yes, there will be footage from WrestleMania. One million percent. Yeah, I'll try to make a vlog. I'm going to include a couple things because I'll be at Raw too. So I'm going to try to record a couple things. Be good. Be good. Uh, Laura, thanks for the membership. Taylor, thank you for the membership too. Appreciate you. Stephanie, thanks for the five memberships. Garrett, fire top. Middle of my practicum. Become a high school history teacher. Do you have any advice? Yes. Don't walk in thinking that you're the authority and kids are automatically going to respect you. That's not how the world works. And it's definitely not how the world works now. So like you have to go and like earn their respect just as much as, you know, they need to earn yours. So kind of make sure and communicate that. Communicate with parents from the, like from the minute you start, communicate with parents. Even if you over communicate of just like, here's how your child's doing, what have you, what have you. And the reason you do that is because if said child said student, because at times students struggle, you need to call home and it's, you know, a cheating issue or a kid is struggling or whatever. It's a piece of like negative news. They're not automatically going to see you as the enemy of like, why haven't I heard from you before? Why is the first time I'm hearing from you when my student's in trouble? Like, why my, I'm sorry, my kid's in trouble. So yeah, I highly recommend just constant communication with parents. Um, even if it's like, you don't get responses, you know, just sending emails, just updating. And you also have that paper trail for yourself too, to also, just in case a student starts struggling, to be like, hey, I've contacted home, bam, 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 bam. All about paper trails. All the way about that. That's how you avoid a lot of problems. Giggity with Terror, Tom, been feeling compelled to do my first open mic stand up, do it. At my local bar, definitely more on the crude humor, and I have a solid set, but don't know how to feel a crowd or improvise any advice. Yeah, don't do those things. I, lo I love that. I don't know if it's that, like a TikTok thing or what have you. Don't do crowd work. I mean, let's be very honest. If it's a open mic at a local bar, you shouldn't be doing crowd work anyway, because the only people who are going to be in the crowd are going to be other comics, right? Or they're going to be musicians and they're going to be the worst people to talk to ever, especially if you pick on a stand-up comic. Um, so don't do crowd work. Go in there. If you're, if you're doing like a solid five, probably like a five minute set or an eight minute set, just go up there and do your tight five, go up there and do your five, go up there and do your eight. And that's it. And cause then you could, you know, make sure you like, let it breathe because you're going to do it for the first time. You'll probably be nervous. You might speed through and like wind up, you know, leaving out a little bit early. That's fine. But depending on how well it goes, if you start getting some laughs, like you're going to feel pretty good and you'll automatically start tempoing your jokes, like in, you know, additional times if you want to get up there. So you could tell a joke, right? And you could start then improvising in that because you've told it so many times and you know it so many times. You could just like, read it in a dip or you could memorize it and say it in a different way, or you can kind of add little details that you think would make it funnier. If you're like building up tension or building up to a laugh. Oh man. Now I'm in, now I'm in breakdown standup mode. Vitamins are hitting bro. <laughs> All right, let's go. I had a good week. My 90 day review at work was great. Hell yeah. Got my hiring bonus and fit 1400 subs. Hey, don't be modesting. Nay, nay, nay. Did you get 1400 people to follow you on YouTube. That is, that is achievement, just like those other things. Hell yeah. Cheers, cheers. Hell yeah. Neo to fire. Next seven plus hour stream you do, you have to have a uh, minute 420 moment. All right, the chat has to remind me. I will forget. Tim, say, hey, Tom, watch for four years. Love that you're starting to learn ASL. I am hard of hearing myself, and I love when other people learn it. Hey, hold on. I haven't taken a lesson this week yet. Hold on. It's, right, that's thank you. I believe that's thank you because this is good if I'm not mistaken, right? This is good, but this is thank you if it goes this way. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I think. I think. Not blowing kisses. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm pretty sure. Or I just blew kisses there, but 
Yeah, it's all right. Gonna need a secretary for all your appointments. Do you know how many people are like, you have an assistant, right? No. I just respond to everything. Jason, it's too early to see Godzilla Kong. I didn't, because it's kind of like, I like that it's campy, but I don't need to go see it in theaters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, to fire treat students as you're equal to start, always earn my respect. Yep. Kaylee, thanks for all you've done. No matter what happens, keep rocking the chaotic good. You're a great influence on my life. Thanks for everything. Appreciate you, Queen Kaylee. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You're rocking. Big Mo to fire. You've done a lot of crazy awesome things in the past year or so. When's your WWE appearance? I want to see you as a heel. So here's the thing, Big Mo. I would be so happy to even assist in any way, like AEW, WWE, because I love wrestling. Like, I love re- like. It it is that similar to football because like I'll always have like that childhood connection to football. I would say wrestling's probably the number two thing when it comes to childhood because I definitely stopped watching during my teenage years. Like I missed a good chunk of like the Attitude Era. Like the last real thing that I watched seriously was Mike Tyson's special guest referee Austin HBK. And like I still loved HBK and my favorite wrestler was Bret Hart. But, like, I was just a kid. I remember Undertaker versus, like, fake Undertaker at SummerSlam. Like, I remember all that stuff. Like, I grew up on wrestling. And so, I still have, especially because that's not my job, like, it still, like, that same childlike, like, yeah, I just love this because it's part of my job. So, yeah, no, uh, 100% I would do that. 100%. They don't even need to pay me. I don't need a dime. This would fire. Just move eleven hours away from home to start a new job on Tuesday. Damn, that's a that's a big move. All right, crush it, crush it. Be a different experience. Just teach you more about yourself. Cheers, cheers. Thank you. The rad boy. Yes. Yep. Done. Fine. Fine. Fighting McAfee and John Cena at the same time. Where? Well, you only see McAfee versus me, but yeah. You never know where John Cena is. You never know. Upcoming concerts. Going to see Rainbow Kitten Surprise. I got the tickets. I told this on the last Friday. I got the tickets. Going to see Rainbow Kitten Surprise. That's the only one that's on the docket right now, but I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped because they're playing at Webster's uh, or Webster Hall uh, here, so I'm super excited. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Do I think Caleb Williams will be a bust? No. But I think the best part is nobody knows. Nobody. Nobody at all. So... Tommy sign, thank you, correct, but not good. Damn it. All right, well, I got the thank you right. At least I got to go back. I thought it was like, is it in the back of the hand or? I don't remember what it was. That's on me. All right, I'll I'll check it out. Check it out. No, I think the Ravens will be good. I don't, OBJ, no. I think not having OBJ is not going to sink the Ravens. They do need to get another wide receiver, but no, they're going to be fine. If, if they're not okay, it's not going to be because they don't have OBJ. Let's put it that way. It's the hand you use to say it. Oh, is it like is it like that? Maybe? Richard, a tour? Well, uh, tuning in with uh, COVID now. Rest- oh, I'm sorry, Richard. Listen, that thing got me a month ago. That thing kicked my ass that first day. I, like, felt sick for a while then, dude. It was just tough to, like, run it out. I'm so glad I'm, like, feeling better and, like, working out now and just being a little bit more in shape because, man, like, not being able to do that was rough. So, Richard, feel better. I hope you have better experience than I did. That wasn't fun. Yeah, like, I almost had 103 fever. I was like, this is too high. This is bad. This one, not so good. Not so good. Stacy sending houses. Shout out Stacy the realtor. Shut up. But it's like you saying thank you, but your hand as your palm up and the other hand going with your palm up. Okay, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. I'm a, I'm a visual learner, and right now that's, okay. All right. You going to both Raw and Mania next week? Yes, I'm very excited. Very, very, very excited. Don't turn your hand. It's like thank you, but it goes all the way to, oh, so it, is it like, Oh, is it maybe? Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Jimmy! Thank you for the tour. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Shout out. Shout out. 
I'll look it up. Uh, so that's the the teacher that I watch. Like, there's no sound at all, which I really, really appreciate. And it's just a teacher and a student. And they're, it's just, it's just, dang, like, he's such a good teacher. And, like, just the repetition of it and watching it, it like, it really, really helps it. Like, I am a very visual learner with that. Like, I, because folks have sent me a book. And, like, I've tried it with a book, and I'm just like, I can't. Like, that, because you're just using the hands, and I want to be very precise with the motion that I'm doing. Yeah, I got to, uh. I gotta watch it. Join me to our top wrestlers, Pat McAfee at WrestleMania 41. Damn, I'm gonna have to work out a lot more. A lot more. John, thanks for the membership. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Yeah, I, I just need the visual. Yeah, Tim, exactly. Like, I needed it. It was like, if I did because I've tried it on videos, like, before, um, and I just didn't find this guy, and this guy was so good. So I was like, all right. Now I'm, like, actually learning it because he's legitimately teaching. I would have fired to stand for 18 months in my 20s, placed third in a contest, find Buffalo's funniest amateur stand-up, my favorite joke in the next donation. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, my third time doing stand-up. I won a comedy contest at Copperface Jacks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Should I link to that teacher? Yeah, Nick, hold on one second. I just got to find it. Please hold. Your call is very important to us. Uh, I got to find it going to be, let's see, it's probably my liked videos. Nope. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to find it. Okay. Maybe this one? No, not you. Okay. This person. Perfect. Okay. It's this link. This is the first lesson. It's like 45 minutes long, but yeah, no, you learn. You learn. Bam, that's the sign language link. Oh, man, I totally could have Rick rolled you right now, too. That would have been great. Jason, did you play the... I, I've never played the... Was it Five Nights at Freddy? No. I was, I was past my time. Past my time. Terry, with a fire, just wondering. No, you're going to Mania and Raw, but you're going to the Friday SmackDown Hall of Fame. I am not, no. So I will be doing Q&A. Um, I'll be doing Q&A next week. I'm just driving down on Saturday, then driving back, and then, yeah, driving down on Sunday and driving back. So, excited, though. Definitely, definitely excited. It'll be cool. It'll be cool. Mm. Dominic with the flaming hot take saying, I think Carmi's Johnny John John is better than the original Don't At Me. You might be spitting some fire. You might be. You might be. I don't, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. So, yeah, I don't disagree. Ravens having Henry. If Henry can stay healthy, I'm really excited to see. They're, it's good. they're gonna be good. On offense, they're gonna be fun. They're definitely, definitely gonna be fun. Right? It is Carmi. Yeah, I think like it's, right, it's Carmi. Come on now. I also it is gonna be so hysterical as like Carmi starts to like when she what what age do you think Carmi is gonna like realize what her dad does? Like, <laughs> I is it gonna be like a day in middle school, and like a kid's gonna come up and be like, "I watch your dad," <laughs> like you're you're Carmi, because like Carmi will be low key famous as she should, but and then it's like Brandon Perna is your dad who's making like dick jokes on the internet, which is the greatest thing ever. It is phenomenal. It's gonna <laughs> that is gonna be so funny, and like even when she like gets older, she'll be able to like look back on GPS and be like, "I'm never watching that." But like that is gonna be that's like such a cool thing to be able to like look back on too, and just like have that documented history as well. That's gonna be cool. I'm driving a fiber. Todd, you listen to Twenty One Pilots. Thoughts on next semester and overcompensate if you can. Can you take a listen? Raven Super Bowl chances next year. Um, I listen to a little bit, like when they like the right because they do chlorine. Um, I kind of listened to that album bit and it wasn't bad. Um, but I haven't really listened to any of their music since. Like I was like, I like it, but it wasn't enough for me to go. I'm gonna go seek out their discography, so I don't. Um, if that's some of their new stuff, yeah, I'll take a gander. Ravens Super Bowl chances. Um, I'm curious to see what their defense is gonna look like without Patrick Queen. Um, you know, Roquan's gonna be great, but um, I want to see what that defense does. But get another receiver. I'm really excited to see Derrick Henry on the offense. 
I'm really, he fits. I think bare minimum, he stays healthy. He fits the AFC North so well. Like you want some, like smash mouth football. That's Derrick Henry. Iowa Turner, the joke. I want a lawsuit against uh, an eye chart company for using my last name without permission. Found out when I went to the DMV and read the bottom line. E-R-Z, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. All right. All right. Hell yeah. Big with a fire. Four-way TLC. Aaron Donald. Uh, Trent Williams. DK Metcalf. Chalen Ramsey. Special ref Kirk Cousins. Announcers are Romo and Brady. Who wins? Brady attempts to run out on the field and gets speared by Aaron Donald. So, yeah. Tom Brady's like, I could do it. Tony Romo sipping a Corona. Um, Kirk Cousins is, he leaves immediately. He's just gonna, or he's shaking hands. He's either shaking hands with everybody or he's like checking on them. Cause he'd be that ref be like, you okay? How you doing? Right? Or maybe he goes full heel turn. Kirko Chains comes out. He puts in the grill and he headbutts somebody, you know, metal to the head. So he could do that, right? There is that possibility. Aaron Donald and Trent Williams, I, I think they're going to take each other out, right? I think this is between DK Metcalf and Ramsey. Now, Ramsey's a little bit of a smaller guy, obviously, and DK Metcalf is just like a monster of a human being, and he's insanely fast. So I'd give like the speed and athleticism to DK Metcalf. However, maybe the rivalry between Aaron Donald and DK Metcalf, maybe Aaron Donald's also going to be targeting T DK Metcalf just enough to you know distract him a bit. So I'm actually going to go with Jalen Ramsey, who's going to sneakily get the win. I think he's going to quick climb the ladder, kind of when everybody else is down or distracted, pull down the belt, run away. That's what I think. And then he'll be on IR till December. But that, that was just a little joke. But yes, I think Jalen Ramsey gets the win. I think he does. Yeah. Hector, with Twain. How's, uh, this is how I modified the podcast intro for WrestleTalk AEW Review. Rossi Posse Packer Nation, welcome to the Wrestle Talk Podcast, where you don't have to be a wrestling fan, but it sure does help. It fits. It fits. It does. It does. Fins up, baby. Fins up. That's it. <laughs> That's what they'll do. And Miami, by the way, Miami Dolphins will then like advertise that and be like, hey, that's our guy. He won this TLC match between random wrestlers. We can't get that playoff thing, but but we won that. We did this one. I I just want Miami to win one. Just like win a playoff game, man. Like I I uh I feel <laughs> there is a lot of empathy for Dolphins fans. There's a lot. Like I know Bills fans won't like that, but like there is a like just like just you don't have to even win a Super Bowl. Just win one playoff game. <laughs> just one. Cause they just keep getting just like punched in the gonads. They had to be in the same division with Brady. And, like, we're not even talking about the Bills. The Bills should win a suit. Like, they should at least go to a Super Bowl, right? They, just for compensation. But, man, yeah, just give just give them one playoff win. Just one. Just one. Jets fans, there's no hope. There's no hope here. It hasn't been here forever. Um, yeah, no, that's just... But you you've learned... You've learned not to hope. And you may have hoped maybe week one. You may have hoped a lot last offseason. And, and that that was the universe saying, hey, don't ever, don't ever do that H word again. And uh yeah, that's that's where it is. I legitimately think the Jets are cursed. Um I I do think that there there's probably some cosmic forces that are conspiring against the Jets because they had to deal with Brady. It was a celebration when Brett Favre beat the Patriots. Oh, I remember. I remember. But yeah, like in New York, the common phrase is like, oh yeah, those back-to-back -back AFC championships games. And then it gets really quiet. So basically the gods are against you. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they are. I didn't do it. Also at 20, elaboration on the bird comparison from GPS. You're a goose because of the random words you emphasize. Uh, reminds me of geese. Oh, I don't know why. Honking. And Perna and Emu because there's points in videos where there's no thoughts behind his eyes. That got me. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's, that's, that's effing hysterical. 
I do love when Perna on GPS just like straight up doesn't pay attention. Like straight up. And he'll say like a point that I just said. And I'll be like, dude, I just said that. And he'll be like, what? Or I'll go on like an eight minute rant. And he'll be like, huh? Yeah. That's why I love the show. I love it. Perna is an orange cat. Foster, that might be the most accurate comment ever. Amphitur, AB versus Darby Allen. No holds barred. Who wins? Darby Allen for humanity's sake. Prolins, Tom, hope you're good. Have a great Easter weekend. Keep up the great work. Just saw a Lambo video. Go, go, pack, pack. Progress Posse. Hey, Prolins. You too. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. Carolina Tour, did you watch the Nickelodeon documentary? I have not. No, I, I, I really haven't had a ton of time, but no, I have not had a chance to see it. I heard it was not great in terms of just obviously the content. Just to tour, Tom, you a fellow D&D nerd. I've made chaotic good even more recognizable. I like d and I haven't played in a hot minute, but... I do. And I used to be very anti D and D because I was like, oh man, that's a whole nother level of nerd dumb. Cause I was a nerd, but I was like, I don't know the, the stereotypes for D and D players. Like, I don't know. And then I played it and I was like, this is amazing. I just get to do improv. I get to be creative every time. It's amazing. So, and it's you and like your best friends. So it's pretty great. Okay. Big Moa tour TLC match tree scooter, Perna and you who wins. Oh, it's, uh, it's Scooter. It is Scooter. Because here's why. He's going to go on. He's going to have a... Actually, it's not Scooter. It's not. It's not. I just thought through it. Okay, listen. There's going to be a heel turn. Because it's going to be the dumpster fire versus GPS. Right? The tag teams are already there. And then there's Scooter. And we know that Scooter is athletic. So we're going to be like, all right, we're going to take out Scooter, and then we're going to wrestle. Now, before the match, Scooter has proclaimed every single day that he is winning the TLC match. There is no doubt he's going to win it in the first minute. It's not going to be a problem. And he he's really pushing that point. So in the first minute, he's going to be out of the match. That, and that's, that's, that's the Dallas Cowboys. You know, physically, he's very athletic, but that's just the Cowboys' curse. Then it's going to be GPS versus Dumpster Fire. And the Dumpster Fire has a, a significant advantage because five is a purple belt, if I'm not mistaken, in jujitsu. So he's, I'm going to be like, hey, it's wrestling. And he's be like, I'm going to break your arm. And I'm like, no, that's not what this is. But um, that's going to be bad. However, I think when it comes down to it, when both Perna and I are disposed of, I think Tree goes, all right, I'm going to go for it. And five goes heel turn, betrays tree, and then either Scooter goes up to fi- get it, but he just falls off the ladder because again cowboys. And then it's between Perna and I while they're fighting, and we're just sitting there and we're looking at each other. The crowd's going wild, of course. We stand up, right? I tower over Perna a little bit. We shake hands, start throwing right hands the entire time. Now, while we're throwing right hands, Tree and Five are fighting on the outside of the ring. Scooter has woken up from his days after falling up, falling off the ladder. He then goes, I'm going to do it again. Goes on the ladder, has his hand, right, on the belt. He has it, but then doesn't realize that it's bolted in. And so now the ladder gives way and he's holding on to it. So Per and I are throwing rights. Tree and Five are throwing rights. Scooter's hanging and dangling from the ring holding on, trying to pull the belt down, right? He doesn't want to talk about it. So then after all that, right? Bodies everywhere. Scooter eventually falls. Perna and I are knocked out. Tree and Five are still fighting. Or Five is hitting on somebody in the audience. Honestly, it could be either one. And then there's some movement. There's some slight movement from underneath the ring. And that's right. Cole from How About Them Chiefs, those Chiefs, I always forget whatever it is, comes from underneath the ring, climbs up the ladder while everybody is indisposed, pulls down the title, and wins. The Chiefs win again. Every sport, the Red Army marches on. Every single one. By God. That's how the match would go, I think. We're up, boss. Happy Friday. I keep missing these Friday chats. Oh, we're having a great time. We're having <laughs> this. This is phenomenal. Uh, 
I'm having a grand old time. Uh, let's see. Brad, they tour. Can we just get a good freaking QB this time? I hear you, Brad. I hear you. I hear you. Rio Tour, dolphins have no luck because of their war crimes. Fair. They are being punished by God. Brad Tour, and that uh, Pug Seth Drew pro on Monday, gold. Was gold. Yeah, it was great. But yeah, that's how that match would end. That's how. Mm hmm. It's, it's Cole out of nowhere. Michael Cole is upset, even though they have that kind of like uh, first name, last name. Nope. That's it. He's like, oh, come on, not this way. Not this with the kingdom win. And then he throws up the finger. He holds up the cheeseburger. Acknowledge me. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, Luke, listen, that's uh, what the Chiefs are becoming. It's true. It's true. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, Anton. I don't know why the Jets are being punished. It might just be because you're the Jets. It might be, but that's uh, it's, it's it's rough out here. It's rough out here. I mean, not for the Packers. Packers are doing all right, but you know. do I want the Ravens to go to the Super Bowl? I'd be interested to see them. I think they'd be a fun team to watch as they lose to the Green Bay Packers. Of course, of course. Rachel, we need the art. It's you know what? It's a great idea, Rachel. You know what we should do? What we should do? If you make art of Perna, Five, Tree, Scooter, and I as wrestlers in the ring, right? We make one. We make one. We like, you paint it, what have you. And we'll send, I'll mail it to every clickbait member, right? So Perna will sign it. Scooter will sign it. Tree will sign it. Five will sign it. I'll sign it. Perna, it'll take at least six months for me to get it back. And then we auction that son of a gun off for charity. Oh, that'd be so good. That would be so good. That would, that'd be good. That'd be good. Tristan Fire, how many tickles does it take to get an octopus to laugh? Tentacles. I'm not apologizing. Apologize. Join with the tour. Calls music hit, join the Red Army. Yes, that is what it is. I will be at WrestleMania 40. I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very, very excited. That'd be dope. That'd be dope as hell. Clickbait, doing some charity. Hell yeah. If you get start now, it might be done before Christmas. No, it won't. I told you. It it's going to be at least six months. At least. Uh, no, not the draft this year, but I'm going to go next year for uh, Green Bay. Going to do that. Going to do that. Uh, where, where are we at time-wise? Hour 42? You know, we're just uh, past that. I'm cool to keep going. We feeling good? We rocking? We rolling? We good. Please make Perna horn swoggle size. Please. Please and thank you. All right. What are we going to rock with here? Ow. Let's go this one. Let's go. This is the figurehead one I still have. Let's rock with that. That's the one. Yeah, we rocking. We rocking. It's Friday night. I have to work all day tomorrow. To work all day Sunday <laughs> and Monday too. But because I said this in the members Q and A, remember what I said in the members Q and A of what I might have an opportunity to do. Like I, I got that opportunity, and that's on Tuesday, and I'm very excited for that. Very, very excited. Ants on the Jets' best defense. They could have, yeah, they're gonna have, be a top five defense, hundred percent. Ah, top maybe. It could be. Big Mo Tour NFC West, your most hated division besides my own. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I think so. I think so. So yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I guess I could tell the general audience because like even if nothing comes of it, I'm okay with that because it's an experience. Um. After thirty and thirty. I had the idea for a TV series, but I really didn't have any connections in that realm and all that. So I kind of like remembered it. I was like, okay, until I get an opportunity. And when I went to the combine, I met some people uh, out at the bars who were part of some streaming services and they were fans of me. 
and we got to talking. And so I'm going to have an opportunity because I've never done this before to pitch a TV show because I've had this idea for a while and I was like, yeah, like this would be really, really good. And yeah, I get to pitch it on Tuesday. So I'm super excited about that. It'll be really cool. And again, like even if it doesn't go well, like it's just such a cool experience. So I'm literally spending the weekend. um, Yeah, just like refining the presentation and stuff. So I'm really excited. Be cool. Be cool. And it's just like one of those things that um, I kind of got tired of like waiting for opportunities. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to reach out to these people. Like, why not? And so, yeah, we talked and yeah, so it's be cool. It's going to be really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, it's a lot. I mean, like, that's also one of the things that's going on. Like, there's a lot of meetings because there's also prep for June. There's prep, like, I'm trying to do this, too. So, yeah, just going to try because, like, why not? Oh, no, it fails. Oh, no, I pitched a TV show. Like, that's dope. Rachel to fire. Might need to uh, help me with this because I know nothing about wrestling. For instance, what would each clickbait member be wearing? That is a complicated question because if you Google best like wrestling outfits, you will get a wide range of things. Wide range of things. DJ Turret, what type of TV show? It is related to the NFL. It is related to the NFL. Problems with Turek, Tom does classic sports center. Sports highlights. Da, 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 da. Please don't sue me. Don't sue me. Carl the TV series. <laughs> Carl the TV series. Uh, it's not the NFL version of Big Brother. That'd be fun. But no, it's, uh, how many people know who what I'm planning before this? Oh, like the actual concept? Maybe five? Yeah, maybe like five people? So, Coach Season 6 will be streaming exclusively on Peacock. No. No. All right, so... Yeah, I mean, I can just... Talk. Okay, so whatever. I'm not going to like tell you the, the concept or anything, but basically what happened is I met some people, parts of streaming service, um, and I got really excited because I was like, this is a really cool opportunity. Like, I think this is something special. Like, it could be something special. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just really proud of it. So before kind of finalizing anything with a meeting with the streaming site, I reached out to YouTube because I want it to be free. And on a streaming site, people would have to pay for it. And I'm like, mm, I don't really like that. So the first, like the meeting that I have on Tuesday is with YouTube first because I want to keep it here. I want to like keep the vast majority of stuff I do here because like I believe in like what this platform could do and what it can be especially for like up and coming like sports creators and sports media especially as people start like shifting away from like traditional media so yeah yeah it's uh it's cool so I'm gonna do it for YouTube first and yeah again like nothing might come of it like it might be yeah like we can't help with this or what have you so yeah we'll see I'm just, I'm excited to kind of, for the opportunity. But yeah, no, I want it to be free. I want it to be free. Yeah, no, it's it's in the, it's not something very like different for me, if that makes sense. Um, It's very NFL related. So it's not like a, it's not like a comedy or anything like that. It's uh something different. Terry, we're at Terry. Little Joe's going to Mania, but waiting till next month, traveling a couple hours south for the draft. Got the Lions draft app ready to be a long month. Dude. The draft in Detroit, like, because before it got announced that it was going to be Green Bay, I was like, oh, I will go to this. Uh, especially after, like, 1330, I would have definitely gone. Um, that city is going to be, it's going to be so awesome. It's going to be so good for the city. It's going to be such a fun time. Especially because the Lions are doing well, too. Dude, like, that's going to, that's going to be an event. Okay, what a fighter. Make sure to do the Des No Catcher his next uh, clickbait punishment. Also, your next punishment should be recreating the Brandon Bostic onside kick. Just pain. Just pain. Bill and Fire, executive producer Tom Grassi still hasn't bought a house. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. Oh, no, not so- No, it's not fictional. 
it's it's not fictional. No, I'm like, it's not a sitcom. It's not fictional or anything like that. No, it's like an idea for a series. Like, it's me doing things. So, yeah. that That's what it is, folks. And that's actually the name. It's called Me Doing Things by Tom Grassi. That's it. Executive basement producer. Yes. Executive uh, crawl space. Exactly. Exactly. A chair series still on the table. Herman is driving a hard bargain. He is charging $250,000 just for appearance fees. He's honestly gotten out of control, and I don't know how to talk to him about it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Have I reached out to OnlyFans about it? I have not. No. <laughs> I have not. Me doing things. That's it. Done. I'm in. Exactly. Colin, Colin sees a vision. You see the vision. It's me doing things. No, I think it, because I've said this before, and I'm very, I'm very committed to this ideal. It was, I think, a, a Mr. Beast interview from probably like three years ago now, but it kind of just like stuck with me because I'll listen to like um, Colin and Samir. They they run a great podcast. They have over a million subs now. Congrats to them. Like they they blew up. They're, they're good. They said they had, they had a little cross channel before that, but um. I don't even think it was a Colin Samir episode, but Mr. Beast was being interviewed and he basically was laying out like what creators do. And he like hit the nail on the head. And like, there's obviously exceptions now. Like you look at like Logan Paul and prime and stuff like that. But he says, YouTubers get successful like on this platform. And so then they get other opportunities or like they'll start getting into another endeavor, which is eventually going to take time away from their YouTube videos and so because of that, like their audience isn't is going to grow as much. And then you start, you know, you stop producing content or slow down significantly producing content. Then your fans become disinterested. And by the time you like go back to it, whether it's a year later or whatever, the community is not there anymore. Cause like you weren't there. So like, that is something I've like always remembered. And I was like, Oh damn. Like, yeah, that's, that's a really good point. So like, that's why, like, I really hold steadfast. Like this is a free show and this is always gonna be a free show. Everything that I do is free. Like, minus the monthly Q and a, cause I was like, I have to give people a per like a perk cause they're paying for monthly. So like, I got to give them something. Um, I just have no time to give. So I was like, all right, I'll do another monthly Q and a for at least an hour. And like, those have been great. There's so much fun. Um, but yeah, so it's gotten to a point where like now that there's other opportunities, I'm still very like grounded and focused of like, I don't want like a ton to change. Like, I like what I do. Like, I don't want to go do, like, sports commentary for a network. I think it'd be fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, a guest thing? Sure, that'd be fun. But, like, no. Like, I like doing this. I like interacting with the chat. I And now I've gotten to the point, which is insane, by the way. Like, I'm the number one stream for that game, like, when we're on YouTube. Like, that's crazy. On the entire site. Like, that's nuts. Like, that's crazy. Bruh, appreciate the fiver. Bruh. But, like, why would I walk away from that? Like, it's just, it's awesome. Like, there's such a cool, like, community and, like, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's just really, really cool. So, I don't want to, like, take that and be like, all right, guys, like, I'm going to go to whatever network. Like, that doesn't interest me. And then I also have to, like, work for other people. Like, I wouldn't be able to make the kind of content I would want to make. I wouldn't get to wake up on a random Tuesday and be like, I want to make a video making fun of the Bears. And Bears fans be like, oh, okay, here we go again. But, like, I like that. And just being able to, like, wake up, not during the season of, I don't go to sleep enough to wake up, but just to wake up, especially during the off season, be like, okay, like, what do I want to create today? It's a, it's a really cool feeling. Um, and I just worked my ass off for it. So, yeah, like, I don't want to throw that away to go work another corporate job. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's on that note. But... Joyce, you mentioned teacher voice recently. Can I hear an example as one of your characters? One of your characters. Hmm. I don't know, because I have the me teacher voice. I don't know if I... Yeah, because, like, the other characters would just, like, threaten people. <laughs> like, uh, that's what they would do. Like, Wildflower would just be like, I'm gonna get you. Uh, I'll ride a leaf home. He'd be like, ooh, hey. It'd, be like, it'd just be deeper. Yeah. 
my uh my teacher voice like if i'm actually like annoyed and it takes a lot it takes a lot to get me legitimately annoyed in a classroom cuz i've never yelled i've never yelled once at any student like not a single one nope because my philosophy was always like okay what happens when i yell they get a little scared and they're like oh my god mr grossy yelled but then they do the same exact thing the next time what am i going to do yell louder like you can't escalate and at that point you've already lost so yeah teacher voice came out pretty rarely it didn't come out very rarely but like when it did students were like oh okay like legit cuz like there was a uh feel like a, i created an environment of like mutual respect and like hey like we're going to have a ton of fun but like we do need to learn and like there's going to be times where i'm like hey like we need to lock in like there is times where like i was teaching ap and i think i was like a halfway or like 3 quarters of the way through and like I walked in one day and like they were kind of like messing around and stuff, which was fine because that was just like the the environment of the classroom. And like I went up to the board, they're like, what are we doing today? And I was just like, legit, we have to lock in today. And they go, okay. And they literally just like pull out their notebooks, like not a sound, like bam, 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 like ready. And because like that was the kind of environment of like, yeah, like we're going to have a ton of flexibility because like even within the curriculum, like I'm going to make this fun because that's what history should be because it's super interesting. So yeah. Um, Teacher voice didn't come out too well, unless it was just like, they were being so annoying. That's the only time. Roger, thanks for being chaotic good. Grass posse. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on now. Matt, for our all college uh, basketball fans, NC State upsets Marquette. Oh, there you go. We're out with a tour. Grassy, how will Jordan Love do? Dude, I'm, I'm expecting an even better season than uh, last year. I mean, yeah, I, I'm excited to see him build upon it. Josh Jacobs will be fun. Um, yeah, no, nah, I'm excited. I think he'll uh, have around the same numbers, but like hopefully less interceptions. Turn it fire. Do we see uh, we are getting new AJ Styles music? Yes. Hope for evil ways are ready to fly. I did. Because he came out and said that, right? He's like, I don't know if my music really fits. Like, you know, it's really cool, but it doesn't really fit like what I'm going with right now. He's gotten like buff too. It's crazy. So flexible schedule. Oh, we didn't have flexible schedules. No, just within the class. Like, even like a lecture, unless we were like super tight on time, which like we were like scrambling like one random day, but it really did not happen often. Like even my lectures are very like participation driven. Like I ask questions like every single time and we go through and just review and just go this and make like new connections every single time to the content. And every time we start, it's just like, all right, start off like where we were at last time bring it back up, like, you know, how does that connect to bam, 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 bam. And it's just, like, repetition, repetition, repetition of, like, creating even just the idea for connections throughout history. So, yeah, it's also teaching, too. The, like, the dynamics of teaching and the dynamics of stand-up comedy are super interesting on just, like, how to kind of just engage a crowd. It's really interesting. Max with a uh, fiver. Tom, as a teacher, do you enjoy a certain uh, class time more? For example, first hour over six hour. I always wondered this as a student. Ooh, that's a great question. That's a really, really, really great question. Janine with a tour. Teacher voices are quiet, not loud, quiet, and slow. 100% correct. So disappointed. Um, Max, that's a great question. It depended. So in my first few years, not really. Um, I personally just like the way that I operated. I I'm a morning person. So I like to get the bulk of my classes out of the way in the morning so I can have like my afternoons free. So I never had ninth period or the last period of the day free. And that sucked until my last job that I had as a teacher. And, the, but I didn't have off. I had study hall. Um, so I was, I was doing that. I was monitoring that. Which is where I like wrote a whole bunch of East scripts because it was just kids are just studying like in a gym is COVID. It was terrible. So yeah, it was as the year goes on, then the classes kind of develop their own personalities. And on top of that, like there's students that are either great or some students that are paying the asses or what have you. So then it takes on, okay, well, I don't want to go teach ninth period today because the last day, like the last class of the day, and they're also going to be like pains in the asses today. Cause like you would just know because it's managing people. I mean, it, can you imagine like 
hurting 30 high schoolers like in a room being like, okay, now we're going to talk about history. So like, yeah, it's, it's legitimately like managing children because even if they were seniors, there's still a level of like, Hey, like, listen, there's respect. There's mutual respect. hundred percent never disrespected any student because like, no, like they come in this classroom, they're going to be treated with the same respect. So like I had students who would legitimately just be pains in the ass to be paying these asses. And I was like, dude, like, what are we doing here? Like I would talk to them like, what are we doing? Like, why are we doing this? And that would usually calm things down because like that, there was also a difference too of just like how you classroom manage like different classes because some were like, okay, you kind of have to be a little bit like louder just because they're so effing loud. And you're just like, okay, and I'm a loud person. So it's fine. Like, so it's like, all right, like I have to be up here and like energetic with them because that's how they wind up being like, Ooh, okay. Like we're now drawn to this lesson. So like, yeah, there was like some classes too. Then, then it gets into teaching methods. Like, you know, there's some classes that are more like visual oriented learners. Then there's some that are like kinesthetic of and they need to go around and like do stuff. So I did plenty of activities and then there's some that are auditory learners. So it's basically just, it's differentiating instruction. That's the, the fancy teacher verbiage for that. But yeah, um, it dep- that's the long way of answering. Like it depends on the class. So race with a fire guessing teach boys reserved for middle school students, bro. My, Oh my God. There were some great middle school students, but there was one kid. Oh my God. He was a pain in the ass. He sucked. He was, it was seventh grade middle school. And that was the placement. It was way upstate. Um, it was the placement where, my mentor teacher, this is my second one, my mentor teacher, who had been a teacher for 14 years, was getting laid off at the end of the year. And then here I come. Like, this is like, he's, you know, 14 years into this. And he's like done. He's like, I got all like I need. And I go into this place. I only just, like, I just taught high school student teaching. I'm still in college. And he's like, he literally tells me that like the first day. He's like, yeah. 14 years I'm getting laid off at the end of the year. So do what you want. And I'm like, okay. Like I literally, so this is my first time teaching middle school. And uh, yeah, they were, they were different. Like the, the period one was pretty good because they're groggy and they're not awake yet. So they're not completely miserable. They're like sedated a little bit, but as the day goes on, oh my God, middle schoolers suck. <laughs> they suck so much. They're just little monsters that need to be like running outside until they're exhausted and then maybe they'll learn. They suck so much. I get it. You have to, they're kids. They're literal children, but good God, they suck. And they're hormonal. So then they think like they have attitudes and stuff. And just like, no, just stop. Just stop. Yeah. So basically you drop kick, you drop kick middle schoolers. That's it. But yeah, um, they got the teacher voice. That's actually where it like, cause it throws you into the fire. Cause like, like my teacher, my mentor teacher would just leave the room. And so it was just me. And I was like, all right. So, cause my, my previous mentor teacher like stayed with me for the first like two weeks. And I was like, oh, like he knows what he's doing, which was pretty cool. And then she left. Um, but middle school. Yeah. He just dipped the entire time. And so I, uh, I literally just like was the teacher in that class for a couple months. And that was, uh, it was interesting. It was tough, but like it made me work on my classroom management because you can't manage the classroom by that same like lackadaisical, like mutual respect atmosphere with middle school in my, it just in my profession. Like there's some middle school teachers that may be able to do that. Just like the situation I was in, in the class that I had. Yeah. I couldn't do that because they were like, oh, well we will take advantage of this nonstop. Round with fiber. By the way, what deal, uh, deal did you get? Fran three, three franchise QBs in a row. And how do I do it as well? Blood demon. Tell me your secrets. It's called patience. And no, you don't have to be a doctor to have it. Now we let Hall of Famer sit behind Hall of Famer, but sit behind hopefully future Hall of Famer. Can't win a 990. What subject will you teach if you don't teach history? English. Yeah, literature, English. 100%. That's not even close. Not even close. Mm -hmm. No more recess during uh, middle school. Hard to burn energy. 100%. Like they need to run outside. They do. Realtor, what's a crab uh, rangoon to a crab rangoblin? That's what I've been asking for years now. Centuries, maybe. Even centuries. But yeah, middle schoolers, like, they are little monsters. 
and they are not updating uniforms. That was unfortunately fake. And then some people fell for it. It was not real. Trista to fire found out yesterday what my teacher voice sounds like. Turns out it's my eighth grade basketball coach. Yeah, it's always interesting when you do that because you like also you're just learning from other teachers too, right? Like you're learning just from experience and being like, okay, this is what my teacher voice is. There was um like when I was in quote unquote teacher school, which is my undergrad, um, I had a teacher that was just like, you need to be in like an asshole language. You need to be one. Like just for every class. When you start out, you need to be, like, a complete and total a-hole. Because, like, and, and just, like, then throughout the year, you ease up. And you're like, okay, like, you know, with certain classes. So they're like, okay, you start here, where it's just, like, super strict. Bam, 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 bam. And uh, I was told this, and I was like, yeah, no. Because it was so unnatural. And then I did it in high school and I was like, no, like, I think I really could do this my way. And I did. And like with the sophomores, a little tougher, the seniors gravitated towards it. They really appreciated it, uh, especially if they were like tired. And then the sophomores, like they were more rambunctious because like they're still children, but that was just student teaching. And then middle school, I was like, oh no, this doesn't work for this. I understand that advice now. So yeah, you just, uh, you learn, you freaking fracking learn. That's crazy, man. Yeah, the dynamics of, uh, you learn a lot about people. You learn a lot about people and just, uh, yeah, it's a great job. I love teaching. Teaching's so much fun. I, I just really enjoy it and just, like, helping people understand um, stuff and, like, connections. Because you're, like, also teaching them to be many people, you know, and, and that was the number one thing, regardless of the content. The content's secondary, you, like, you teach them how to critically think for themselves because they like, you know, they show up ninth grade. They just have like, you know, ideas filled from like their parents or social media, whatever, whatever. But like actually getting a student to like think for themselves and like form independent thoughts and opinions, like with no bias and just be like, Hey, no, like think critically about like this primary source and then forcing them to identify bias too, like is such an awesome skill. Good God. It needs to exist more today, but like just to identify that within text because then it trusts, like, it teaches you, like, oh, this author is biased because they were working for the Catholic Church, and this is a pro-Catholic Church primary source, right? Just, like, those little things, it, it it's phenomenal, and those are just, like, life skills, like, whether you're reading the news or, you know, just, like, talking to people. So, yeah. Hey, Chairman of Fiverr, good on you for not raising your voice to students, speaking from personal experience that uh, shit makes kids bitter in the long run, compassion works. It does. It does. And, like, there's going to be students, like, this is the real world. There's going to be some students that don't, like, they're just, like, no. They're, like, they're not going to buy in. They're not going to what have you. And then it's your job to do everything within your power. Like, everything to get that kid to learn. Like, because that's your job. Like, that was why I took teaching so seriously like I did. Like, even when I was working with this, teaching was, like, okay, like, no. Like, when I'm here, I'm paying attention. Like, I'm, I'm working. And it's, like, you those kids are your responsibility. And you give them everything every opportunity and like even if they don't they slam the door in your face whether they just like don't take it whether they're lazy what have you you give them every opportunity and every motivation you can up until the very very end i graded things like literally the day before graduation so kids could graduate and i was like yeah because i like there were some students who just had like a really bad home life and what have you especially during covid i was like yeah like whatever just get it to me and show me that you know it like do the work and then you're good so yeah the <laughs> For money. Huh. So, yeah. Look, with Turk, we hear the teacher voice. Uh... Mm. I be snappy. Uh, I, I worked... F I managed schools that were doing international baccalaureate. And uh, I think it's a very cool concept. Um, it's very rigorous. But... It also depends on like, who's running the school. You know what I mean? Um, teacher voice. I don't even know. It's been a while. It's been a while. Because I haven't gotten annoyed like at a group of people like that in a while. It's just deeper. It's just deeper. So like I talk when I so when I teach, like I'm gonna sit away from the mic so you can get like an idea. <clears throat> So this is usually my teaching voice. So like my voice is already up here. 
Because when, because I've all, I'm Italian, so it goes out pretty far. So I teach up here. So again, even yelling wouldn't be significantly higher anyway. But considering I'm always up here, they're not going to fall asleep, one. But two, it also gets their attention because I'm talking to them and it's like, oh, this is being presented to me and they're not being talked at. So I would talk this. So this is like my normal presenting voice. And then I probably, if there was something that was like going on, like guys enough, but it would be like much deeper and loud. I can't do it now, but like it'd be much like deeper, same kind of like pitch, but it'd just be deeper of like, hey, I talk at a pretty like high octave just because that's my voice. But like when things get serious, we need to get a little bit, a little bit deeper. Here I would fire. I think Jimmy versus Jay will live up to the other brother versus brother matches at Mania. Hardy Boys and Brett and Owen. Uh, I don't think anything's going to live up to Brett and Owen, even though their WrestleMania match wasn't even the best one. But um, I don't think it'll live up to Brett and Owen. And the Hardys one was pretty solid. It was pretty solid. But I wouldn't put it up there with one of the best. So, I mean, they're good wrestlers. So I think it'll be solid. But the build hasn't been that great. Like, it feels like it's based off stuff that happened at, like, SummerSlam. Like, obviously, they have all this history, but they've been separated for so long because they made, like, Jay a main eventer, which is great. But it feels like, oh, okay, they're kind of throwing this together last minute. So, yeah. Yeah. Favorite female wrestler? Um, I mean, Rhea's freaking awesome right now. Rhea's dope. Um, I know she's not Sasha Banks anymore, even though the promos are a little rough, but she's just a phenomenal wrestler. She really is. Um, Mercedes Monet, right? And that's who she is now. Um, I love Shayna Baszler and I've talked about this like a lot. Like I really want Shayna Baszler to get pushed. Like, because I think she, she doesn't even have to be a good talker. Like she's just like an ass kicker. I mean, look at Brock Lesnar for the longest time, like how terrible he was on the mic. That's why Heyman was with him for so long. And then they kind of like, he let out of his shell a couple times when he was running. And then, you know, obviously all the things came out, but I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy like her style, especially when she first started and it was kind of like more like MMA stuff. So, yeah. But yeah, I, I really enjoy them. Um, Yeah, AEW is interesting. Like, AEW has some talent, uh, that women's division, but like it definitely needs to be, it needs to be promoted more, but it also needs to be like improved upon. Yeah, and I feel like you had a an era too, like that NXT era, like especially like with Becky and Bailey and Sasha, like all oh, that Charlotte, like that stuff was like so good. It was just really, really good wrestling. Yeah, they need to get back to that. They do. They do. And history teachers usually all right. They are usually all right. They're pretty solid. They're pretty solid. So we'll see. Did I, did I play any instruments? Uh, I played the saxophone for a year and then clarinet for a year or two. Yeah, those are my instruments that I played. Saxophone, I was like, it looks cool. And then I just never showed up to practice. <laughs> I literally went and did a concert because like your parents like pay money for this. And I just like kept forgetting practice. And I was just like, oh, I can go to practice or I could go outside. I'm going to go outside. So I went outside and uh, I was like at like one of the holiday concerts and I just had to pretend to play the saxophone on stage because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't practice any of the music. I didn't practice a single time. Like, there was no shot. Clarinet, though. Clarinet, I took a little bit seriously. And, like, I sucked at clarinet for a while, but then I got decently good at it. Okay, I have a tour. Jimmy Uso is Chamas. Jay is you, so... It's just me, Us. It's just me. Yeah. I want to go outside. I want to go outside. Also, my band teacher sucked. Like, they weren't good. There was one guy who was really good. Um, like, fifth grade, but that was it. Janine, what a fire. The two words to get my students' attention are, excuse me. My room, we respect each other. Being disrespectful gets a teacher voice. Yeah. Oh, so you do, like, the excuse me. That's I've heard that teacher voice a lot. I never used that one. Excuse me? Yeah, that's, it's a good one. That's an old school one. That's an old school, like, Oh? That, so that was the thing too and like I think I've talked about this before you build like a rapport and you build an environment in the class like I did this with my AP kids my AP kids like I didn't really curse in front of any of my kids my AP kids though I did 
like very, very minimally. Be- and then I cursed at their parents. So that story is like the first day. Oh my God, I scared the bejesus out of those kids. I I loved that class so much. The first day, it was my first time ever teaching AP. I was like terrified to do so. And I was like, oh man, this is a big deal. Like there is this um, like this intense exam at the end. Like they can get college credit. So like it 100% matters. And so I took it so seriously. And that first day I was like, okay, like I know how to teach. I like, this was my third year. I was like, I know how to teach. So now I'm just going to like, I'm going to raise my own game. And like, I was like a day or two days ahead of those kids. Like just like learning the content for myself, like in a way that I can then digest it and like kind of be like, okay, like here's how this works and kind of break it down and break it down in all its nuances. So the first day I hand them like this thick syllabus, right? Boom, 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 boom. And at this point, like I'd been there for three years. So like students knew of me and they were like, yeah, he's like a fun teacher. And so AP, I was like, all right, we're also like, we're, we'll be fun, but like not yet. So I hand out this syllabus and I like give him a whole lecture. And I was like, this class is going to be hard. I was like, this is your first AP class. You've never taken an AP class. So they take it as sophomores. I was like, this is going to be a difficult class. My class is going to be more difficult than the AP. And I just kind of just go like, bam, 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 bam. I was like, you're probably used to getting A's because that's how you got in this class. It's probably not going to be that to start. And I just like scare the crap out of them. And I then like, there's like a little lull and I go, but that's why I'm here. And I go, my class is harder because by the time you sit down and take the AP, you're going to do really well on it. And I was like, yeah, and you're going to struggle in the beginning because you need to get used to this stuff because it's like a higher like level text. You're reading stuff at like a near college level, at least for high school. And like, you're going to get better at it. And even if you're bad at it, you're going to get better because I'm going to make sure you get better at it. And like build them up and then like ended that conversation. I was like, all right, so like no bullshit. Like we're going to do this, right? And they're like, and I was like, no, no, no. We're not even gasping at that. And they're like, okay. Then they were locked in from day one. So then their parents came in for back to school night. And I remember sitting there and I had taught them for like a month at that point. So I had an idea who the class was. And I, I sat there and my first year teaching AP, the assistant principal's daughter was in that class. So my assistant principal was also in that room when I was talking to parents and I looked at them and I was like, listen, your kids are probably going to come home with like some quiz grades that are not going to be good. And you're going to get really upset because your kids always got A's and you're paying a lot of money to go to this school. That's all really nice. I don't give a shit. And there was like this kind of like pause. I was like, because I'm here for your kids. And if they struggle, I'm going to get to the point where they're not struggling. I'm going to do everything in my power. And I talked about all the things that I'm going to do in terms of like Saturday pre, like I gave so many pre-tests on Saturday, like eight o'clock in the morning. Like I graded all those, whatever, whatever. I went above and beyond for my kids. So I was like, yeah, because that's the kind of teacher I am. And they're like, okay. And then the assistant principal came up to me and I was like, all right, I'm ready to get yelled at. And she was like, that was really good. And I was like, all right. So I BS'd my way through that. And damn, that was the highest test scores in 10 years in that school. So let's go, baby. That's teaching. Eagles and Terrence came out of the theater after seeing Godzilla Kong New Empire. Loved it. Fun, epic, intense. Everything I expected in a blockbuster. Nine out of 10. I heard it's a really fun movie. And it looks fun. Like it, it looks very campy. It's dope. Just to a ter- For me, 2005 Triple H was a real son of a gun. Probably my favorite version of the game. Hell yeah, attacking Ric Flair is my favorite Triple H moment. His promo the next week was great too. Dude, Triple H was such a good heel. Like he was, I mean, like he get he buried some people 100%. He was a good heel. Dylan to fire. Uh, what would you pop the loudest for at Mania? I laughed like tree when Roman won. I still think Cody's going to lose if he Roman wins. I'll pop if Stone Cold comes out and like stuns The Rock. I'll pop. I'll pop for that. Janine, went to her. Of course I'm old school because I'm old. I feel that. Feel it. Joe with a fiver. Checking in after a tour of fair four intense days singing for Holy Week liturgies in my cathedral choir this weekend. Three fists down. Hope everyone's doing well. Joe, appreciate you. Did you get my email too? Yeah, reach out to me, dude, in like July. We'll definitely link up. I'll hop on there. Yeah, it's just like right now, there's no shot. There's uh there's definitely no shot. But yes, we will do it. We will. GPAs versus college credit. Yeah, I don't care about that. I don't care. That's that's beyond my classroom. My classroom's my classroom. So we gonna rock. We gonna rock. Those kids gonna learn. They gonna learn. So hell yeah, Joe. I am going to Mania. Yes, very, very excited. 
Very, very, very excited. So, but yeah, that's what teaching is. It's, uh, that's why it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And I like, I tell people like, you have to love it. You have to love it. Like there, there's a reason you want to be a teacher. Like you want to help students. Cause like I knew people, like I knew friends who legit got into the profession because they're like, we have summers off. And I looked at them and I was like, this is going to be rough for you. And they were done teaching within three years. Because like, it's not that kind of job. Teaching is a job where it's, it's a 24 seven job. You take it home with you in so many different forms in terms of paperwork and grading. And also just like exhaustion. You do not have the summers off. I didn't have a single summer off when I was teaching. Not a single one, unless I was going to a new job, which had happened once. So, yeah. Yep. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. That's nuts, but yeah. I liked it, though. I really, really liked teaching. I love this. Like, it, but I, I really, really enjoyed teaching. It was very fulfilling. I really enjoyed it. And maybe it'll be something eventually, you know, like I go back to, but just like, it's all, and Janine will tell you, and a teacher will tell you, it's, it's, it, it is rarely the kids. It's, it's everything else. And just like, what <laughs> can I just teach? It's a lot. Pat, high school history teacher is why I'm a huge history geek today. A good teacher can make a big difference. Yep. Yep. Justin, big gold belt world heavyweight championship is my favorite belt design. Looks so cool. Such a great design. It looked good on everyone. I, Goldie, yeah, big gold. I get you. I'm a winged eagle guy. Always a winged eagle guy. Mm -hmm. All right. We're 221 in. Here's where I'm at. I got P for the D. Gotta go bathroom. But I'm gonna do like one more. I'm gonna do one more. So if you're rocking, we're rocking. I'm gonna pee for the D. And uh, we'll do more. Unamas. Unamas, chair. Take over. Nachos are all sleeping upstairs. Dash is on the couch. Tough life. It's a tough life, chair. Chair! Chair. Chair, dude. Hector! Fiber. Fight me all you want. But the spinner belts, US and WWE are the most beautiful belt designs in the history of pro wrestling. Come at me, I dare you. Hector, it's objectively wrong, but it's fine. If you like it, they can be your favorite. But they are not the best, and you know it! You know it! The Undisputed one's better. Big gold is better. And of course, the winged eagle. The greatest title design ever. Ever. True. True. Or two. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Sneak you to uh, tenor. My dad's a math teacher with 30 plus years under his belt. Greatest man I know. In a few months, he'll see me live out his original dream of becoming an engineer, even graduating to highest honors. <laughs> Yo, that's got to, first of all, congratulations, because you worked your ass off for that. That has to be such a fulfilling, like, especially if your dad, like, wanted to do that. If he wanted to be an engineer and his son 
that would just by the way just like you talked about him real quick seems like a decent relationship pretty good man that's to be a very like proud moment so congrats that's awesome that's freaking dope just to your tom favorite book and why please elaborate Ooh. it changes it 100 percent changes um I'm going to good cuz like it's not like a Harry Potter like I like Harry Potter don't get me wrong but like it's not that because when I was in college I I talked about uh Professor Palantir before and uh best teacher I ever had and he used fiction to demonstrate to teach history and so reading that stuff in like English and then reading it in history class and just having those complete and total like holy crap, like, there's, like, so much in here, like, in this text. That was such a, like, eye-opening experience. So, I'll, I'll tell you, like, a few of my favorite books because, like, again, it changes. And it changes, like, how I'm feeling about, like, the world, myself, what have you. The Great Gatsby is a million percent up there. Um, I read it in high school. It was kind of like, whatever. I didn't absorb it. I thought I, I, I either the teacher wasn't good enough or um, I just wasn't enough for that book at that time. So the Gat, Gat, Great Gatsby is great because I read it in college when talking about the 1920s and looked at it and was presented with a lens of look at this post world war 1 trying to reclaim the past daisy as soldiers are coming home as generations are longing for the time before there was the great war people came back maimed and broken just like nick right like the main character like he's broken and reading a book for the first time with that lens was a holy crap, man. So yeah. And then I read it again, like when I was like, like years down the road and I read it in like a few hours and I was like, this is amazing. Um, so Gatsby's definitely up there. Um, the other one, I always forget the full. Yeah. Okay. So the other one is being there. It's uh, Kozvinsky, I think it is, being there um, because of the different interpretations of that book. And the professor I had had a very specific interpretation of it. But again, just like looking at it from a historical lens. Um, so I would say that's probably like number three, maybe. And then I have actually only read it once, but it hit me pretty hard was Slaughterhouse Five. Vonnegut, yeah, he's he's just an amazing writer. He's just a really good writer. But Slaughterhouse Five is a uh it's a great book. That's a great book. And um this is like a very deep piece of Tom Grassi lore. So people know this. In 2011, um when I was living in my apartment upstate on Thanksgiving when both myself and uh, well, Jade was my wife then and she was my girlfriend. Um, now ex, she, uh, she was in long Island and I was in the Bronx celebrating with family and we got the call that the apartment was on fire and like completely torched the, uh, upstairs. And like, thankfully, like the kittens were okay. Like that was, uh, the kid, kitty goes meow. They were okay. We had to take them to the emergency vet and all that great stuff. Fred survived. Shout out Fred, my leopard gecko. But, um, when I was going through literally like the wreckage, like our bedroom was gone, like guest room gone, like everything. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, I found a copy of cat's cradle and, uh, it survived the fire, but the pages were like burnt. And I like took it with me cause I hadn't had a chance to read it yet. And, uh, I, I wound up like telling this to Palantar one day and I was like, Hey, like I have cat's cradle, you know, but it, it got burnt in the fire. And he's like, that makes it even better. And I was like, damn, 
Okay. I still haven't read it. I still haven't read it. Cause, um, like I want time to do that because like Vonnegut, like he writes some good stuff and I'm, I'm a big fan of his. So yeah, I think I need like a good time in my life to like have a little pause and be like, all right, I want to read this and digest it. It's a very long winded answer about what my favorite book is. I hope that expounded enough for you. Janine with a fire. Teaching is very intense, especially sped, but I wouldn't do anything else. Even on my worst day, my kids make me smile. I remember why I do it. Exactly, Gene. And that's why you're a teacher. And that's why. That's it. Andrew to Fiverr. Uh, thoughts on Harry Turtle Dove's work? I have not read his stuff. Uh, okay, Guns of the South. I've heard of Guns of the South before. Yeah, no, I'll just be right. I I don't know. I just I just don't know him. I apologize. Yeah. I don't I don't read a ton of nonfiction. I read fiction of the time mostly. Like that's I, I like to learn that way and just kind of like read into literature more from a historical lens. We're pause with a fire. I read uh Ken Follett, a great medieval fiction offer. The first one in the series called Pillars of the Earth. I think I've heard of Pillars of the Earth, but I know I have not read. Again, like yeah, I don't do a ton of uh like even historical fiction. Yeah, no, it's literally like fiction of the time to get a better understanding of the time period or it's from like a philosopher or it's from like kind of just somebody who's like written, like it's kind of like known it like historically and just their writings. Like I read Thoreau and all that stuff. Hector at 20. I'll agree the Undisputed Championship is gorgeous. The black and white uh, shooting stars. The spinners are full of so many diamonds. You need Fort Knox to protect that sucker. And it <laughs> defined the PG era. It definitely did define the PG era. I'll give you that one. Line with 20. Okay, Tom. I had a teacher uh, who would, did a pop quiz the first day of the first subject in a history lesson and told us straight that everyone will fail this quiz. So, sure. I understand that teaching method. It just, they need to follow up on that. Why are you just trying to make your kids fail? Because that's stupid. That's dumb. Like, I would make my quizzes hard, but there would be students who would get, like, a 9 out of 10, and they'd be happy. Like, and these are, like, AP kids, like, straight A kids. And that taught them to be, like, oh, also okay with other numbers. Like, you know, their world is not going to end. But, like, you just increase the level of difficulty. And by the end, they're getting 10s out of 10s nonstop. And if they got a 9 out of 10, they're upset. Like, that's the kind of thing you want. If you're just like, I want you to fail, and then that was it, yeah, there's no lesson there. Rio Tour, you ever see Faulkner's resignation from the post office? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Joy Wittar, speaking of different perspectives, recently I uh, listened to So Cold by Breaking and Benjamin. I thought about it from the perspective of the Grim Reaper, and it's so much better. Yeah, you can do it with music, too. Music's so much fun from the time, too. Yeah, you know, on a fire, get what Sauce Gardner said about Jewish people. I'm glad AJ Dillon didn't follow Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I saw that, like, right. It was, like, he was on that, oh, my God. I really try not to remember their names. Just, like, as an Aiden guy, right? I gotta be honest. Like, I just, I don't. That's not my world. Um, Yeah, I don't even know if he was joking or not. I just don't know enough about it. Because I literally, like, bro, like, that name comes up. And I was like, nah, I don't, I, nope. <laughs> Can't wait to fire. Find a big difference in terms of learning between people who read and those who use audiobook version. Um... Not a ton of my students were, like, listening to audiobooks, I would say. There were some, but no, not enough to actually, like, give a, like, a concrete answer on anything and actually come to a conclusion. Blind Widow! Oh, no! Boop. Same. Also, why don't you fail this pop quiz? Because I want to see where everyone is struggling so I can work together as a class. I'll pin every class against each other and would have a pizza and ice cream party at the end of the year. I'll also use an extra drill sergeant. See, that actually can work. So there is a, you can, comp so I usually, I did at the end of the year. I had fun with that. So if I wanted to get kids really motivated, I would wait until like the near end of the year. And it would be very little things. So for the freshmen, just like the gen ed uh, students, I would have them basically do family feud. So I, two kids would come up. Right, I'd break up into two teams, and the winning team would get like ten points on this test. Right, and by this point, like the tests were so easy for them because like they like understood everything, whatever. But they were so competitive because they were like at the time like ninth grade girls because I taught an all girls Catholic school for four years, and like I would put two desks together, 
they would come up. I was like, all right, hands behind the back. And like some of them would like try to like turn a little bit. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, we're not cheating up here. And I would ask a question. And if they buzzed in before I finished the question, they would just have to like go based off what I said. There were kids that would slam that desk so hard just be like because they were just trying to be first. So there was times where I was like, yeah, you know, last class, they got a lot right. And they'd be like, all right, suit up. We're going to go like that's the kind of motivation, like pitting against each other that I thought was like really fun because like that just added another level of like fun and competitive spirit to it. So, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, it can work. But again, it depends on why you do it. Okay, Jay, I want to tell you, do you ever help students uh, who may have had learning disabilities pertaining to reading? I love math and science, but humanities was hell for that reason. Even now at 31 years old, reading is tough. Yeah, I mean, well, that's also teaching, right? So you will have students. So I taught, the majority of my career was in inclusion classrooms, meaning that you had um, some students, uh, whether were in special ed or who were like at a lower level for what have you within the classroom. Uh, a few times I did have a co-teacher, but for four years, I did not have a co-teacher. And so with those four years, it, in, in my opinion, like what it should do is make you a better teacher. So yeah, because then it just makes you differentiate your stuff even more. It's like, okay, do you need a copy of the notes? Do you need me to like sit with you? So like there were students, like I gave up my lunch and I was like, all right, like let's go and like work on essay writing because like it's taking a little bit more to anal like analyze this document or DBQs and stuff like that. So yeah, absolutely, all the time. But then it's just, you need to find ways to get the students to understand. Because again, that's your job. Got you in at 501. If you could uh, have passed you... If you could have passed U.S. in the NFL, what would your ideal offense look like? Okay, so if you could have passed U.S. what, like, residence? Why am I not understanding? If you could have passed United States in the NFL, what does that mean? Are you saying, like, just in the past of, like, all offenses? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Timber with a fiber. Loki enters uh, shadow. So many books on leadership. Not many of the beans of the world. Those who have answers but aren't natural leaders. There you go. There you go. Sam! Tom! Happy Friday. Here to remind all you that call is law on the UFO. Call is law. That's true. These are just facts. Johnny Barks! Neil, I want to tear the current top of contenders in my QB survivor ranking are Stroud, Stafford, and Mayfield. Also share my survivor thoughts. I'm uh, home so I can't say cheese and they didn't really like it. Yeah, as long as you do. That's all that matters. That's all that matters, right? That's it. Yeah, if I think Cousins will be uh, good at or fun to watch play Survivor. Also, what's your favorite obscure piece of academic knowledge? Hmm. I think maybe he would watch it. I feel like he would watch it. It'd be fun to get into that. Favorite obscure piece? I usually go with, like, the defenestration of Prague where they push people out the window and one guy lands in a whole bunch of, like, farm animal poop and survives and they call him like saint poop it's great uh it's not poop but it's a different word but yeah basically made saint poop and uh yeah so that's fun i like teaching some concepts of like da vinci and throwing things at them of like i showing like the journal stuff and just like how many ideas for things he came up with and why or like why not it is either impressive or practical or what have you like i had a student like we were showing them like you know like uh designs of like helicopters or whatever whatever like da vinci had all these different things the power gliders and so one of my students was like well what if i just like wrote down on a piece of paper right now that like i created rocket shoes and i was like what she's like yeah what if i draw it right now it's not possible but what if i just create like rocket shoes am i a genius am i like all these amazing things and it led to a great conversation with the class but it wound up like ending with such like nonsense because again they're ninth grades so it's like what are we doing here but that was fun that was fun uh now it's your thoughts on the boston molasses flood i unfortunately didn't get a chance to teach it but learned about it and was like damn that that is a pretty good uh piece of history so that's your term. Meant U.S. presidents, my chat. Got it. Got it. Um, so U.S. presidents offense. Well, yeah, Lincoln's got to be in there. Probably going to be QB. Teddy's going to be in there too. Um, yeah, Teddy's going to be like a fullback or a wide, uh, running back. It'll be solid. 
So I'd throw Taft on there. He'd be O-line. <clears throat> Washington could be head coach. Washington's got to be the head coach. Yeah. It'd be a pretty good offense. And run through Lincoln. Run through Lincoln. Ford is center. There you go. There you go. Tay for tight end. Yeah, <laughs> Lincoln better not take a hit to the head. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Jay's had Allagash, then had Figurehead Brewing Company, had their Belgian. We're going to do one more. We're going to do Uno Mas. We're going to do Uno Mas. Time. All right, we're good. We're good. All right, we're missing things. Probably. Probably. Good. Cool. Great. Wonderful. Another beer. Oh, that, by the way, I just got, that was that email. Sorry. It was from Nora from the video today um, because that was also the other thing. Um, am I Christian? No, that's my brother. I'm Tom. The, so the can do canines, those pups, like they go to prisons and like they help rehabilitate. And so that also like Lambo did that. So, like, there were prisoners that also are, like, associated with Kendu canines because, like, they send them in there for, like, rehab and kind of, like, all this stuff. So, like, that, it's freaking awesome, man. It's freaking fracking awesome. So, they're a really cool organization. They are. Now, if I like QBs in the category, first boot material, or Deshaun Watson, Zach Wilson, the only question is who would be worse at Survivor? I think it's Zach Wilson. Yeah, I think it's Zach Wilson. I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. All right. I'm going. Please hold. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of afraid of this. So he gave this to me. It's an Oktoberfest and it's March. So like, I'm kind of afraid this is not good anymore. So I'm not going to have this one. We'll go with the IPA. I have another new Glarus in there. We'll go IPA. We'll go IPA. Run up. Run up. Okay. Is the fridge still haunted? No, it has been making less haunting noises, which has been nice. It's been good. And I've been down here a lot, so. Yeah. Thomas Soul. That name sounds familiar. I don't know if I've ever read the book. Maybe when I was a kid. Or like a teenager. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. There you go, Bill. Some happiness for New York sports. Onomas. He has an IPA too, so not going to chug this guy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Since it was Good Friday, I was wondering if you were a Christian. Uh, I grew up Catholic. Yeah, I grew up Catholic. Um, went to church every Sunday until I went to college. And then, yeah, just really wasn't for me. And that's it. I got nothing against religion as long as you're not persecuting other people or using it as an excuse to hate people. And uh, yeah, I got no issues with religion. Just makes you a better person. Good stuff. Good stuff. Wookie, it might be. There were some times that, that fridge was sounding like a monster. Uh, it was sounding it. Uh, Tom, when you create your new studio, can you refrain from painting the wall the same color as your skin? Yeah, no, 100%. I, I know I camouflage into it. This wasn't an artistic choice. Yeah, this happened before podcast was happening. <laughs> Hector at 20, Lance Storm, two finger points. Uh, could be serious for a moment. Tom Grossi is the greatest pro football YouTuber in the history of the world. They have all a great Easter weekend from Deming Paws, New Mexico. Hey, I appreciate you. Listen, I, I think uh, I like the content I make. I don't know about best, but I appreciate it. I, I really appreciate it. Again, this is never taken for granted. Also, the splinter is still in my finger, but yeah. Hey, there you go, ghost. Congrats, congrats. Yeah. Catholic. Mm-hmm, which is a section of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a while. Been a while. Been a while. So, yeah, Splinter's still there. At least I think it's still there. I think so. It's, like, really close to the surface now, though. Yeah, it's getting close. Or my finger's gonna fall off. It's one or the other. No one or the other. Yeah, I know. As long as I don't get infected, I'm, like, pouring peroxide on it, so. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, try plastic ID card in the other direction. Ah, I, dude, I've like, I just don't have like the sharp uh, tweezers. That's a problem. I need those. Either ones. I just don't want to. Rachel, with a fire. 
Don't ask how this came up in a combo, but my dad randomly asked, is Tom Jewish? And I immediately answered back, no, he's a Packers fan. That is probably the best answer you could have ever given, ever. So that was, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a phenomenal answer, Rachel. <laughs> She's like, no, he's a Packers fan. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Got it. Got it. I still remember going to Green Bay uh, before the Cowboys game, and, like, my dad's like, we're going to church. And I was like, whatever. Like, we're, we're at the Cowboys Packers, and the Des no catch. And literally, like, the priest talking about Packers football and was like, let us get a win over the Cowboys. And I was like, all right, that's legit. No, if they fire, I think Kirk Cousins makes the Falcons contenders in the NFC. I think they make some contenders in the NFC South. I think that they can win the division or compete for the division. After that, I still want to see more from the Falcons. But I also want to see how the new coaching goes over, too. So, yeah. 40-yard training. Or pause. We're getting stronger. Oh, yeah, we're working out every day. I'm working out every day. I'm taking it seriously. I, I really want to go back to the combine, and I think I will have a better time. So, we gonna rock. We gonna rock. So, Joseph, uh, Texans, Packers will be really fun. Dolphins, Packers will be fun. Colts, Packers will be really, really fun. And I think Jaguars, too. Yeah, AFC South teams that we don't really see very often, like every four years. So, yeah, uh, some young QBs. We have a young QB. Why not? It'll be great. It'll be great. So, maybe watch checking if the sermon was getting long. Oh, one million percent. We That congregation was like, we're here, but come on now. Come on. It's all. Let's go. Let's go. Nope. You know, Armstead, sneaky good signing. I think it's a good signing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, he's got a few good seasons left, I think. Yeah, he's a little bit older. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Tracy. Appreciate it. Still, is he better in your opinion, Tom? Um... I like Patrick Queen. Give me Queen or give me Mims. But I think there's a lot of uncertainty with their offense. I think they really need... I like, I like Najee Harris. I think Jalen Warren needs to get more carries. Um, I think if it's Russ... Man, like, unless he's just like... I think he's going to lean on the run game a lot. I think he's going to lean on the run game. Because, like... If he has that same kind of like, we're just going to throw it behind the line like it was in Denver, like they're going to get smoked. But I think if they lean on the run game and let Russ like have some time, they'll be okay. Um, Justin, I don't know how they're going to utilize him. They might use him as a gadget player, like a Taysom Hill type, or if Russ is struggling or gets injured, they'll throw him in. But yeah, I, I'm like, I'm very not sold on Russ there right now. But I just don't know what type of offense they're going to run. TJ, Fire finally changed my name to something legible. Happy Friday, Tom. Hey. Let's go, TJ. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Happy Friday. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really, really interesting. Remember when Springsteen thought jujitsu was a religion? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Those were the days. The glory days. Those were fun. The East was so good. The East was so much fun. Oh, that was great. <laughs> that was like some of the craziest times of my life, but that was great. Thoughts on the Reddick trade? I like it for the Jets. No, I do. I think he's a really good player. I mean, again, might be short term, but, you know, if he, if he has the same kind of performance he has the past couple seasons, he's going to be good. He's good. Do I think uh, Love will have a, so a sophomore slump? I mean... The thing is, like, last season, he went through the ups and downs. You know, like, he had, like, that week one, which is amazing. Had the comeback against the Saints, which was great. You know, but the loss against the Falcons. But then, like, struggled, you know, for a good long bit. It was just turning the ball over. Receivers weren't going to get the ball, et cetera, et cetera, and just making some bad decisions. And so, like, but then he got so good. Like, he got so much better. And, like, that Lions game on Thanksgiving was crazy. And then just, like, beyond that, it was just so good. And then, you know, he makes a mistake, uh, in the 49ers game, I just, I hope that that doesn't come back, but if there's anything that comes back, I see maybe he has like around the same interceptions. I just hope that, you know, those kind of decisions are left with this season. I hope, I hope so. We'll see. We'll see. One of my low key favorite moments of the East saga is when we first introduced the NFC East family. The whole bit was so freaking funny. Yeah. 
And who knew like that would spawn into that? Like the like the Bruce and Springsteen video I started was just so much fun. And I was like, I'm just gonna keep going with this. And then introducing Carl on the motorcycle with flip flops had a very different intro music. It was like dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that was great. What if Tom has the ring of power, bro? I wish I'd make more content. <laughs> I'd make more content. Steelers bear Super Bowl. Oh, please. God, no. Oh, God, no, no. North saga is the best saga. I went all out for the North. I went all out for the North. Even when I was like exhausted and like, oh man, I don't know if I want to do it. Yeah, no, I was, uh, there are a lot. I didn't really cut corners with the North either. Like, there's some sagas, like, just some episodes. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so, I have so much work. I can only give this so much time. But, yeah. Gal State Tier, best Royal Rumble return. Ooh. Edge is great. Cena in 2008 is great. I was supposed to be at that, but I was throwing up all night, so I couldn't go. Um... Yeah, style, like, style's not really returning as a debut, but... Cena in 08 is pretty crazy, but Edge was, I would say, like, most recently was pretty freaking great. Yeah, and then you're just going, like, deeper back into history, but, yeah. Gonna shed a tear after the Coach Season 6 finale? You and me both. I've been thinking about it more. I'm like, I can't give it my full attention right now because I'm trying to do a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, like, after after what happens in June... I'm going to like really give coach my time and like focus and effort. Um, yeah. No, that, that ending is going to be good. That ending is going to be really, really good. I'm really excited for it. So we'll get there. Fat Batman, at least you had a good time. At least you had a good time. That's all. That's it. 10 plus hours coach season. I don't know. I like, and I like, I'm not being facetious. I'm not trying to like hold anything back. I don't know. I originally had six episodes and then I had 10 episodes. And then I literally was like, I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. It might be six one hour episodes. I have no idea. Basically, I'm going to do it till it's done. That's it. Fan of Fire 4, get new lore. Uh, what have been your top five or favorite moments so far? Oh, Finn, don't do that to me. All right, but you know what? I can give you any, you know what? I can give you a unique perspective. I can give you a unique perspective. Because there could be ones that, like, I'm just really proud of or I was really happy, like, how it came out or just, like, remembering how it was when filming it. I think in no particular order, we're going top five. Coach season three finale, Ambitions Talk with Tom, is, and and the whole time, like, Tom is out of focus. That was not intentional, but I literally had no time to go back and fix it, but I was like, it kind of works, because, like, Ambition is so focused, so, like, it works. So, Ambition actually sitting down as it was built throughout season three, and he's even built like all, like on a different stream, like during a lore stream, because my Madden didn't work. That was uh, that was really great. Sensei, I appreciate you. Thank you for welcome to the bossy. So, that's what like that that's that's around the top. It's not a moment, but it's an episode. The interview in season two. It's a very real episode. That's a a lot of, like, legit questions are being asked. So, Daniel Dirt, your sign for Mania should just be chaotic good. Chaotic good, man. Chaotic good. Chaotic good. So, I would say, like, that episode as a whole is just, like, really... that That's great. Um, also, with the Season 3 finale, I still think it's, like, it's up there with, like, one of the best things I've ever done. Season 3 finale hit. Um, so, the interview... I think the night... The night is when I just had really had fun with horror, but the nightmare, that was just effing fun. The nightmare, like, I messed around with, like, camera stuff, and I used, like, actual nightmares that I had 
Like that's also where that comes from too. And like, not just related to Chamas, but legit. I had that. I've told this on stream before. I had that nightmare of uh, when I was sleeping downstairs, like I had that nightmare of I woke up and I looked in the doorway and there was someone standing there and they dropped to the ground and I could see their shadow moving across the floor and they grabbed a nightlight and it like, and it went out and I, and like that freaked me out so much. And I literally sat up and I was like, holy crap. Like that was legit scary. I'm going to put that in an episode. Like when I do a horror episode, like that happened. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And I did that. Like I literally did that and it worked just so well. So like, I was really happy to see that like come alive. Cause I love horror. I love horror. I would love to make something horror. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so that'd be like three. So like the night and the nightmare, I'd kind of like combine to one, just like making that come to life and like doing horror, which is a passion of mine. So that one, the wildflower conversation with uh, grandpa Cardinal is definitely a moment. If we're just going off moments, that is, I think that came out so well. That was really well done. I was very, very, very happy with that. Um, Even though I think the episode before it was still better. Like Lenny in the box, I still think was better. And then the fifth moment of, like, my favorite. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's up there. Um, the season one finale is really good, where it actually becomes coach. That's good. But... There's a particular scene that I'm thinking about and it's the coach season five finale. And it's just one I've seen in my head for so many years. And it's when Tom is at the beach and he turns around and then like it cuts to baby Tom, like toddler Tom turning around. I love that shot so much. Like it's a very meaningful shot. The whole memory stuff I love, but that, uh, that shot I thought about for years. Um, the season three finale ending I thought about for years. I thought I literally thought about that ending for three years. Um, yeah, the love episode is just a, that's a different beast, but yeah, it was good. Allison and Fiverr, uh, with how the North uh, going right now, you say Calvin needs a suit too. And since it's wrestling season, uh, what would be your and Cal's <laughs> entrance theme? Calvin does need a suit. And... Mm. Entrance theme. Hold on. I mean, Calvin would just be Roar by Katy Perry. It's not a badass, but it just fits thematically really well. Um, hmm. You know what? Maybe I, I'd go so bad. If they really want to lean to the badass thing, I don't know if they've earned it. It would be Batista, I Walk Alone. Maybe. 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 Oh, something from Rise Against would be dope. But then it'd be attributed to the Lions. No, the Packers want cool things. That's it. Yeah, fam, there's, there's a bunch of moments where like I'm really proud of. Like Carl's death. Carl's death in the East Saga. Spoilers. It's been four years. Sorry. Carl's death in the East Saga hits. That hits. I think also in the South Saga... Shit. Because that, that... Language. There's... Damn. I will say the South Saga, which is slept on, by the way. I will, I will die on that hill. The Intervention episode is probably one of the greatest scripts I've ever written and best execute. Like, it is such a tight script of... It, it's just so well written as a as an episode. Like for me, I just love it. You disagree? That's fine. I like. I just personally love it so effing much because the intervention is played for laughs, and those laughs have been accumulating throughout the season of like Greg Craig being like a gambling addict of freaking Seb, who's been this goofy high guy the entire time. 
reading off the DraftKings like disclaimer. Like there is legitimately so many funny moments in that episode. And when it turns and the moment that it turns and just being there for the premiere of being like, no, like this is actually like messed up, like what you're doing. And then also the reveal of Seb legit dude. That was one of my, like, I, I think it's one of my best episodes. Cause just like, I just got into a mode and I wrote it and I was like, Oh damn, this is something good. Like this is something so special. And that also happened because it was easier to film because I just would set up chairs around my, my living room and I didn't have to go to multiple places. It literally was just like, I think it was like kitchen and that, like those are the only locations. So yeah, that was good stuff. That was some really, really good stuff. Hmm. I think that's it. Yeah. You're supposed to be frustrated about them. Yeah. JB and Bart. What? What? It's so good. Well, have I ever considered quitting drinking? Yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, I told this story before in 21. Yeah. It was the 2021 season. I was drinking every time I streamed and I was streaming like three games on Sunday, one game on Monday, Thursday night football, and then Friday night Q&A. So I was drinking sat- it's like Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. And then if I like did something on the weekend, right? On like a Saturday. So I only have one day a week off uh, if I don't work on that Saturday during the season until December. And like there was a point where I think it was like January, like 22, and I walked out to my garage and I saw how many beer bottles and like cans there were. And I was like, oh damn, like this is too much. Like I don't like to do that. And, and that's kind of ever since that point, I kind of had a relationship with alcohol where like, I'm good. Like I don't do it very often anymore. Cause like, I don't really love the way it makes me feel, but like, I do enjoy drinking it, but significantly more in moderation, like legit probably Friday night Q and A's now. Like that's where I probably drink the most. Like, that's why I like the combine. I was like, Oh my God, this is crazy. But yeah, no, I think the, The important thing for me is, and I'm not trying to like dispel advice on anybody else. The important thing for me is when I go a long time without it. And sometimes I'll do this to myself just to make sure like I have a, an addictive personality to like things of like collecting or whatever, whatever, whatever. And I never wanted that to be for like substances. So what I would do is if I think like back in 22, if I was drinking too much, I go, okay, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. And I just go, no, I'm done. Like how I went vegan was we stopped eating meat for a while and then we were pescatarian for like a few years and then I literally was like, I'm done. And I never did it again, except of course like by accident. It's happened at like some restaurants and stuff. But legitimately, like seven years ago, I was like, yeah, no, I'm not doing this anymore. And that's how I just cut it out. And that was it. That was it. So, yeah, like that's why... Like that's anything like, and that's why I'm always for, cause you know, I don't take sponsors, but like obviously with like GPS and stuff, like I'm also very serious of like, I don't want kids to get addicted to gambling. Like it's a really important thing. So like every stream I'm like, like I literally worked into lore of like bet with not over, you know, like that's, that's a thing. Like, and that stuff bothers me. And so like, that's why I make it very clear, you know, Pern does ad reads, but like every time I'm like, Hey, like just be responsible. That's it. Like it's a responsibility. Just be, that's it. Max with a uh, f- tour, top five favorite places from 30 and 30. Uh, Pittsburgh, well, I mean, Lambo's up there. I've just been there a lot, so I'm not going to put it on there just because I want to do different things. Atlanta for the stadium. Uh, I also love the food there. It's my, oh, my God, the food is so good. Pittsburgh, 1 million percent. Love Pittsburgh. Seattle was absolutely gorgeous, even though I hate their football theme. Um, Denver was great for Perna, but like I've also been to Colorado before, but the fan event was so good. And then it's like, Kansas City, Baltimore, Buffalo. These aren't in order. Um, Detroit was so good. I'm trying to think of like there's other. Dallas was good. Yeah. I mean, even Arizona was great too. Like, like those back end ones were so good. 
Yeah, I mean, just places, though. Like, Pittsburgh stood out to me because I just didn't ex- know what to expect in Pittsburgh, and it was so good. Cincinnati was effing awesome. God, the fan base was so good. It was so much fun. That whole fan meetup was, like, the, the highlight of my trip. Yeah. It was really good. Santa Clara? No. Santa Clara made me annoyed because there was so many effing businesses around. And there was a theme park next door. And I was like, there's a football stadium here. Like, why isn't there like more like walkability? I know they're building a more a mall and stuff like that. But like, yeah, it's yeah. Charlotte. I have the picture from Charlotte still on my desk. Charlotte's fan meetup is like one of the best experiences of my life. Like it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Yeah. Janine, the theater in Foxborough, because like we were all like this weird God, New England was so like that's the thing. I don't have a single bad thing to say about like a place because I I legit it's so lame, but I love them all because the people were so awesome. Like Foxborough showing up first of all, the Patriots being like, "Hey, we're gonna let you in," and we're like, "Oh damn, okay." And then they all bring us into the theater, and we're all sitting there, and I'm meeting all these people for the first time, and I'm like, "Okay, like there's an awkward energy." But then we just start dicking around in a movie theater and like during the movie being shown because they're like, this is the history of the Patriots, which I've seen before because I went there once before with Max. I took him there for his bachelor party and I was, like I just started making comments and everyone starts laughing and then everyone else starts making comments. And then it was just fun as hell. Like the entire tour was just so much fun. Oh, that was such a great time. It was such a great time. So, yeah. It was dope. It was dope. And then just, like, the people in Santa Clara, though. Like, the people stand out to me. I, I met Ishii. Like, that was effing awesome. But Cerebral Palsy Gaming came out. Like, that was so great. Like, it was the people. Because, like, that, like I had people telling me that they're like, hey, like, I'm putting you on while I'm, like, doing construction all day. Like, I'm watching your old streams, and I'm like, Wait, what? And like it 30 and 30 hit me like a ton of bricks of just like, damn, there's people who are like telling me like they got me like because you see it again. I've said this, you see it through text and like in the chat and stuff. But for somebody tell you like, hey. You know, I was in a dark place, like suicidal tendencies, like thoughts, whole nine yards and like the, the content helped. That's some heavy stuff, man. Like, that, it's heavy stuff. And as someone who has gone through those exact dark times, you know, like, it is, it, it's a great feeling of, like, damn, I'm so happy it helps, but it's it's heavy stuff. You know, and it's, uh, it, it's stuff, like, I take seriously, you know, and damn, it was just, it, it was legitimately the happiest I've ever been. What was the phrase I used? And, and I, I mean it so much. It, it redefined literally like how happy I could be. Cause I just went to 30 different places. And it was just myself. Like I was awkward in new England for like a hot second. So I was like, Oh, this is weird. Like it's professional or whatever. Like I'm gonna make jokes. And like everyone made jokes. And I was like, Oh, this is amazing. These are my people. So like, yeah, it was so cool. It was so much fun. And just like, everyone was great. Like everyone was so kind. Everybody was like, Hey, we're going to give a dollar to help like a kid who's sick. It legit was the greatest time of my life. It was so much fun. And it was just good. It was just good stuff. It was special folks. It was special. Coach would fire spend an Easter weekend with my family in Utah. Special shout out to Mark, Jane, Rosemary, and James. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. James, James, James. Since they they fire. Love the content. Tom, you really bring the Packers community together. Just curious what percent of money goes to charity versus personal use. For what? So anytime I raise money for charity, 100% goes to them. You yeah, know, I don't touch money. Uh, my show is completely and totally free. It's always going to be free. And the only money I make is through AdSense, which is obviously on the YouTube side. Uh, donations, which are never required. I've never asked any of my viewers for money unless it's for charity. And... Uh, like if there's a sponsor with a different person. So like GPS sometimes has a sponsor, ClickBay will sometimes have a sponsor. And that's it. That's uh and then like Patreon, which there's people on there. I appreciate the hell of YouTube memberships, which is included in that. Um and the merch, which Rachel does and absolutely crushes. And uh 
that's a small percentage because I don't even advertise it to people because I don't like selling things to people. But yeah, so anytime there's a fundraiser, no, 100%. No, I don't touch any money. And if I touch money, I make sure that it's accounted for immediately. I take that incredibly seriously. Um, if you are trusting me with a charity slash where you're going to put your money, I take that really seriously. I don't tell you about investments. I don't do any of that. Cr- I never did any crypto BS, none of that crap. Um, yeah, no. So I, I survive by making videos and just like doing stuff five days a week. That's it. That's it. Oh, also shout out to Andrea, who's also making GCU plushie. She emailed me and Andrea's just been doing great work forever. Um, she has like full, what have you. She can make all of them. Uh, she said 25% of each purchase is going to charity, which is effing awesome. Get out of good. And uh, she does great work. So if you want that stuff, check her out. Ellie would say, my mental health has got to my lowest point this week, but I'm back now. Hell yeah. Thanks for being you. Also, I play old game streams while doing my nursing homework. Oh, damn. Also, nursing? Bro. Respect. Respect. All the respect. All of it. Forward with a fiver. What was the pinpoint moment of 30 and 30 that you knew it was something big? It's a tough question. Buffalo was the start of it, though. The first day in Lambo, the fact that there was that many people there, I was like, oh, that's surprising. Buffalo was a different beast. Buffalo, see, Matt, thank you for the fiver. Buffalo was... Buffalo was crazy. Um, The fan base was incredible. I legitimately hurt myself. Both my elbow and my back were really bad. Um, And I legit slept 90 minutes that night. I spent 45 minutes in the shower picking gravel out of my elbow. And uh, we missed the flight, and I knew we missed the flight. And without hesitation like Johnny like thought he threw something out I went through all the garbages in the airport I didn't care 6 a.m that place opened we uh I was like yeah we're renting a car and we're driving six hours and 48 minutes so to get to Foxborough so that in myself was a uh, a turning point but Baltimore the video that came out of that Baltimore was special Baltimore was so, so special. The fan event was amazing. But the way the team kind of just, like, got it. Yeah. That, from a video standpoint, because that happened two days earlier for me, from a video standpoint and how that video came along, and, like, legit, like, McAfee messaged me, and I, like, legit teared up. And I was, like, crying. Because I was, like, I had imagined, like, this is where it could go. And the fact that somebody in this industry was like, we're going to take notice of this YouTuber in his basement was such a like, oh my God, like all this planning, all this money, all this effort, it like got noticed. And that was a, like Johnny, I was like, dude, just record it. I was like, record it. Cause it's real. It's just real stuff. Um, and just showing the beauty of that city and like bringing in Graven, which was amazing. Yeah, that one was a, I would say for a, a video standpoint, that one was the a major, major turning point. All-star or tenor. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Uh, see Matt with a fiver. Uh, what I love the most about Coach and Saga is that you make your assumptions and look at things in your own way. Yes, yes. That's the point too. That is the point too. 100%. 100%. Yeah, it was a pity me a chaotic, because it was all positive. I wasn't trying to do gotcha. I was like, ooh, this fan sucks. No, none of that. It was like, no, why are you awesome? Dude, D.C.? D.C., I was like, welcome to Washington, D.C. We are on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial as a history teacher who has never been to the Lincoln Memorial. Never been. This is my first time, and I'm in a wildflower outfit. And we're standing there, and we're talking about this, and they start chanting, F. Dan Snyder, and they're not saying F. And I'm like, this is the most surreal moment of my life. 
This is insane. Insane. Uh, Liz, uh, so, yeah, I don't know if you have the Twitters, but Andrea does have, maybe someone can also have the link for it too. Um, but yes, uh, someone should have the link to her page where she sells a lot of stuff, and that, that was dope. That was dope. So she'll hook you up. It's like 75 bucks or like to 150 bucks, depending on the, how difficult it is. But yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a whole army of wildflowers. Yeah. Both in Balt, like the Baltimore marching band showing up in multiple locations, not knowing that they were going, like that others were going to be there. That was dope as hell. That was so much fun. So much fun. You don't have to donate to be responded to. No, just people who donate again, they're giving their hard earned money. So like, I make sure that those are red. But yeah, no, you don't have to donate. Nope, never. Where did Lami's lion come from? So actually, that was a... All right, this is a long conversation. It doesn't have to be, though. It is from an ex of Jade's, who is also a friend and a dear friend of mine, who gave it to Jade, who then Jade didn't want to take it and gave it to me. That's where Calvin came from. So there you go. There you go. Boom. Liz, there you go. There's the plushies. There's the links to Andrea. Damn. And Sean also. Sean, Sean got you. Got you. He got you. So. All right. I'm pretty sure I went longer. Damn. It's three hours and 15 minutes. I'm going to go eat dinner. So. I'm going to do that. AJ with a turn. Hey, Tom. Been a while since I caught Friday corn talk. It's been a while. Corn uh, is a fruit, botanically speaking. Uh, tortillas are fruit roll-ups. Doritos are fruit snacks. Enjoy that knowledge. Thank you. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. I'm going to eat some food, and then I'm probably going to go to sleep because then I got to work tomorrow on this pitch. So I appreciate y'all. Folks, I'll see you on uh, Monday. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get more reaction videos out. And by more, I mean at least one because I haven't done any. But yes, those season reaction videos are going to come out. I promise. Okay, Chad, if I hoping to move back to D.C. this year, if you ever find yourself back there, hit me up. We'll check out the museum. Hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. But folks, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy UFL kickoff you're going to watch tomorrow. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go back go. That's a splinter hand. <laughs>